Blake's Buzz Live. Hey, Buzz Buzz Babies, it's your boy Blake, and uh, it's Tuesday, and I got a cool new Ghost Machine hat, because guess what? When you, inter when you interview Jeff Johns so good like I did, because I'm a pro, they give you presents. That's, I'm such a good interviewer, I get presents now. It's amazing. And, and lucky for me, though, the, it's not that I'm a good interview. It's that I have great, and let me, let me just explain great guests and i'm so lucky and on that note tonight i have i have not i don't just have a guest tonight we're going old school blake's buzz we got a panel we have a kickstarter panel of awesome talented professionals that i'm so excited to talk to we've got some cool campaigns we're going to talk about i'm going to bring out our first guest jessica mason who is here uh doing mary mary shelley is just Sl what slaying all day right that, that's what the kid like all day on kickstarter non-stop uh feeling if you're feeling good about the the new campaign yeah no i feel great and it's like been so awesome to start to show this new book the next you know origins to to everybody we got new monsters we've got new merch um and yeah it was just the first day was amazing everyone showed up and people are still showing up and the other creators have been so supportive and been shouting out the campaign and you know it's just it's just been great yeah nice that's cool that's and I'm, yeah, and you, I'm here having a good time with you so yeah <laughs> yeah that's and, and you're also i'm I, I I'm, I'm interested to talk to to our other panelists about this too but mm -hmm. you're launching a campaign during con season and you went yeah. you, you went to eccc uh you're going to be at, at mega cons the next one Oh, what, I'm gonna be at Wonder. Gonna, I'm gonna be at Wonder. WonderCon. Wonder, Wonder, yeah. I get WonderCon and MegaCon confused. There's two. There's yeah. so many. But so, so you're gonna, you're gonna do that. Um, is it? Is that like? Is is that better? Worse? Stress? Does it make does it make okay. cons better? Or is it? You're like. Well, it. I, you know what? I I actually haven't ever had a live campaign while I was at a con before, so that'll be my first at WonderCon. Oh wow. Um, and then of course Emerald City was like the week before. Um, but partially just because I hadn't planned on going to that con. And then I got invited to the Mary Shelley uh, presents uh, panel. I ended up moderating it and, um, and it was really great, but yeah, I wasn't expecting it. And so it is a little more stressful, but it is nice because it gives you something to talk about with people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Con and convention people are con, I'm sorry, con and Kickstarter people don't always overlap because they're, mm. you know, sometimes they do. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, so. those those Kickstarter people, as we're about to find love, out. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, the, uh, speaking of those Kickstarter people, I'm, I I joke, but we've got some other awesome Kickstarter creators sitting in the green room. Both of them have been on my show before, so like you know, not huge surprises, but it's been a while, and I'm very excited uh, to welcome them back. We've got the the sire of one of the coolest werewolf comics around we got mr rob multarian has oh baby what's up rob how you doing hey, how's it going <laughs> oh man i'm so so glad to have you back and i got richard <laughs> one of my i love one of my favorite illustrators one of the most emotional blake's buzz episodes that will probably ever happen uh was with was with sir richard uh here uh some some solid blake's buzz history and uh it's a, a wonderful uh, panel it's so cool uh to see all these guys all the, these this wonderful group of people is I want an animal sound I, he got a wolf sound i want i want you to do an octopus sound for me an octopus, okay. <laughs> oh man um hold on um i got an idea what are you what are you doing <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was an that was an underwater aquatic adventure just for you richard <laughs> wow so that's what asmr is that, <laughs> now, now you finally experienced what the young kids are talking yeah, about. Yeah, like I know the these... SM is Amazing Spider-Man. I just don't know what the R stands for. <laughs> I don't either, actually. Uh um 
but no, yeah, maybe that's if if I guess if this podcasting thing turns around, I could I could always use the microphone for other other purposes, right? We can record <laughs> weird soft sounds through filters and make the world a better place. Um, but no, uh, audience, uh, Richard Richard Fairgrave uh, and uh, Rob Multari and Jessica Mason, three just very. You know, I would I would call you like you know, you've all been around the block s- several times on Kickstarter now. You've all amassed a very impressive following, in my opinion. And uh, I, they were they were talking in the green room about those those nerdy Kickstarter statistics, right? But they were talking about like returning, you know, audience and how uh, it was it was interesting because it's, you're you're so excited, right? For for the your your returning audience, these, these people love you. They love your book. They come back every time, right? You you get to know those names and. And, and, and you know so you see them and, and and stuff you know and then they're probably the ones that are real good at like posting on social media when they get the packages and getting excited but so you know that's cool but you know at the same time there's a there's a, a necessity right to to further your audience to ri- to widen your reach and 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 so you have to like you know cater cater to the OG squad and and you know try and reach uh, you know potential new grounds and that's like uh you know, how do y'all solve that problem? Because that's the, uh, <laughs> we can do a TED talk on this and probably market it and sell it to everybody uh, for a lot of money, or you could drop all your secrets on Blake's buzz. But it, I've, I've watched all of you grow over, over the years and, and it seems to be like uh, natural and, and you, you work very hard, but you know, like what's, uh, what are some of the struggles of like, you know, retaining and building that, that audience from, from campaign to campaign? Like, you know, how did how do you how do you and you and you're carrying yourself along for that ride too like so like how's how do you how are you guys doing it how you tell us how you're just so damn successful and still happy and charming and wonderful <laughs> all the time you know you haven't let success get to your head yet you know <laughs> like that charlie stickney guy that's a joke I hope he's watching I hope the, the he's things watching. he says privately are <laughs> <shocking>. <laughs> i i keep screen grabs of everything that he sends me but it's it's awful. So. <laughs> He's waiting for a big expose drop. He's going to drop it all at the same time. <laughs> it's gonna. He he he'd put us. He'd put a spin on it. He'd he'd like he'd drop a new white ash campaign like the day of the controversy, and and then it would then it would do like gangbusters. <laughs> I, I, I will say I spent two full days with Charlie at Festival of Books last year. Oh yeah, and um. <sighs> Sometimes I think when people are going to spend like a long amount of time with me, Blake, as you have managed to do now, um, I feel like people are going to get sick of me. Or I, like, I have that same fear. Uh, and and Charlie didn't. And yes. Charlie is one of the most genuinely wholesome, kind people I've ever met. Who was just fascinated by what a fucking dirtbag I am, <laughs> <laughs> and it's that kind of tolerance and acceptance that I'm really looking for in the world. <laughs> I love it. I love he he no he is very he is very accepting and and knowledgeable and and helpful and and I th- I think he's how I met a lot of you like through like this show and and he like referred people to me and and inter- like I know I know it's how I met Rob mm-hmm. Jess I don't remember I met I you well because Cthulhu oh because okay. i came on for cthulhu oh that's messy. right you yeah. were on the the uh that was a mess there was oh wow, i was, was on like the messy nine, i was on the messy was like channel. nine people Jesus. on that on that episode Which, was that uh was that the neverland or was that wonderland that was um, oh no that was cthulhu's hard to spell that was the other oh, that, yeah. oh yeah, yeah that was yeah, that. okay yeah happened. there's oh man there's too many cthulhu yeah, okay because okay. i that's remember right, doing one with uh wonderland cthulhu made wonderland and that was a cluster yeah there's just so many people but that was like one of the first comic uh podcast streams that i had done so oh I was really like, oh this is bananas and then i said hey can i come back you know so yeah that was uh yeah so that was how it's good i mean i don't know you had asked us a question just kind of like how we retain yeah. followers and i mean i don't know with you guys like i think from campaign to campaign i probably retain like maybe half and then I get new like and then mm. just keep, well I'm only in my third campaign so like you know it seems like I, I it's not that I'd lose the other half it's just that they don't they might buy the book online or see me at a convention or you know I'm sure I lose some people but they don't all come back this mm. so it's like getting those first people to come back and then trying to get new followers you know new people interested in the book which Kickstarter helps with to some extent mm. 
but I think like stuff like working with other creators helps as well. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but Jessica, um, have you done the like deep dive into your um into the analytics to see like how many people have come to each campaign? I do look at the analytics. I don't dive too deep because I get too obsessed, but I give <laughs> I get the basic like who's backed which one. And just, kind yeah. Of, yeah, see. And then I start to recognize certain names, which is nice. That is mm. cool. Like on the third one when you've got you're like, oh, these are the hundred people I've seen the whole time. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I use um backer kit launch like yeah, so for whenever I'm um launching and, and running a Kickstarter, instead of doing like the up multiple updates, I have 13 campaigns. So like I, that would be insane. Like people would just be super annoyed. Um, but that helps to, you know, using launch pulls all of the past backers and lets them know when I go live. Um, so like right now I, I'm like, like 80% return rate for That's like great. my current campaign. Um, I think right now, like, because I've been doing it so long and I've been hitting every channel that I possibly could over the last five, six years, it's harder and harder to find new readership. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of like where I'm at right now. And, um, you know, I think people right now are trying, you know, they want to try the new stuff or they're like sticking with the people they know. And then they're like, okay, well let's dip our toes maybe into something that looks cool. Um, you know, but like, again, it's the struggle is just, you know, once you've tapped into everything, what's the next thing to experiment with and, 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 you know, try and get new readers that way. Did your spinoffs bring new, like from, like when you did like the snow patrol or snow Paul, so I'm not snow snow. That would have been illegal or you would be very rich and not on my show. If you did snow patrol. Uh, the, but, or, <laughs> but like when you did, when you did snow Paul, like, you know, when, even though it was from that world, but like a, you know, like a new series kind of, you know, mini series, did, did that bring in new people? Or, it did actually. Oh, yeah? Um, so snow Paul actually has the the issue one has the highest backer count that I've ever had for a campaign. Oh, wow. Issue two is second and issue three is looking like it's going to be t somewhere around there um, at this point in the game. Um, uh, Nightwolf has always had a great following. A lot of them have come back for Snowpaw, but then um, I think Mog Park, you know, brings her own audience in mm -hmm. as, you know, because she's a, a yeah. illustrator for Snowpaw. Whereas like with Nightwolf, that's Carlos Herrera. And um, he doesn't really have much, of a, I mean, he has a following himself, but like he's in um, Latin America. So a lot of Hispanic speakers, so mm -hmm. not so much translating over <laughs> to getting an English book. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, you know, that that's it plays into how I have a higher backer count for Snowpaw. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a different and I, I feel it's a more unique story compared to like Nightwolf, you know, being like the urban fantasy, you know, werewolf mm -hmm. horror you know, action, uh, whereas like this is more takes you're taking werewolves, but also throwing them into like a fantasy time period piece in the 19th century. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, you know, I think a cool thing that people like kind of gravitate towards. Um, but it is it, it's sometimes too, like whenever I did a survey with my audience um, that I call my wolf back, um, I asked them, you know, about like the art and if they backed Nightwolf and if they backed Snowball and if they didn't, why not? Um, kind of like the people who didn't back one or the other campaign came down to an art aesthetic. So mm. some, some people, like I'd say 25% who didn't back the Snowpaw back Nightwolf because they like that aesthetic better and vice versa. It was about the same, you know, but like different 25% saying oh, the same wow. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rob, am, am I right, Rob, that Snowpaw is, uh, all ages? Uh, it's, I would say probably like young teen up okay but it's yes. it skews younger than nightwolf right yes yes nightwolf um has more of um let's like a rated r feel right. to it this is probably mm -hmm. pg-13 you okay. are this is the the weird thing about these two series is you are kind of going the opposite direction of everyone else on kickstarter where <laughs> the more adult content you put out the better you do and you're like i'm gonna go a little bit more kid friendly and like your numbers <laughs> jump it's it's like it's every opposite, time someone yeah. has traditional wisdom about how this platform works, it just gets thrown out the window by someone. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I was shocked too. Cause I, I, I had no expectations of getting, I mean, I figured, okay, it's the same, same series world. Um, it's werewolves. You know, I, I had no idea that it would be that much more, um, you know, attention on it. Um, I think probably, you know, like I said, this, the uniqueness of it, plus a female werewolf being the mm -hmm. main focus, I think, 
but but not in like the you know the the way females are portrayed in a lot of like the you know the non-safe books mm. uh, it's quite the opposite as you said so it's it's yeah i, I it shocked me to be quite honest because <laughs> i had originally planned it to be a four issue story arc and be done i but leaving it open to be more if it got popular enough and like after the first issue i was like okay we have something second issue okay this is still going <laughs> <laughs> Richard, did you how how are you doing like with the with with ex wives like because how like are you finding are you, are you have you're you're you know simply you're very much like 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 Jess and Rob like you you have a loyal you have a very loyal following and and people that will you know follow you down whatever very odd and weird sexual trail you send us you know <laughs> and we will eagerly eagerly uh just munch on those breadcrumbs get, get off my sexual trails like <laughs> um, get, get off my sexual trail the sexual trail is not where you think it is yeah. <laughs> um it's it's very strange like i had um i've had two people cancel pledges on this campaign which is the most i've ever had like across five campaigns i've had oh, wow. five cancel pledges in total Fuck, um, I think one of those was me too. Oh, yeah, 100%. When I, when you I my, lost my job, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but to be fair, you got me to Shame. send you the book as a PDF so you could read it for free and then you canceled it. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I actually launched, I, la I launched Blake's, like Blake's Buzz became a thing just so I was like, I was like, I'm never paying for a Kickstarter book again. And uh, <laughs> like, now you get free hats. And it's worked. <laughs> yeah, now I get free hats. <laughs> no, it's, it's very strange. Like, um, my, my audience are incredibly loyal um once they've like i think it's a lot of it comes down to like what rob was saying there are <clears throat> there are a bunch of werewolf books out there um mm -hmm. so you have to really stand out as the the best of the werewolf books i don't think anyone's doing books like mine like i'm not gonna say they're like they're kind of by default the best at what they are <laughs> so when someone says they want to get no one is looking through the 10 campaigns they're backing this month and saying like well, Richards is really similar to anything <laughs> else, I guess. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm launching a like, I'm launching a, a suburban horror set in New Jersey in 2015 in a couple of weeks. So that one's kind of the closest to normal I get. We'll see how that goes. Maybe maybe I'll get like a bunch of people jumping on and dropping off really fast. But yeah, it's it's strange. I haven't, um, you know, I I still do. Uh, the majority of my my earning is at conventions. I'm okay. very good at selling in person. I hate the internet. I hate computers. And so this Kickstarter thing is very much like a, well, it's very cheap for me to make these books because I don't pay my artist because he's a piece of shit who doesn't deserve money. Um, <laughs> and so it's 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 easy, you know. I can just get by on on like like my 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 level has to be so much lower for me to be like, hey, that was actually a pretty good payday. <laughs> <laughs> Before that I get is... in trouble, for anyone who doesn't, I am the oh, artist. Yeah. No, like, not no, you three know, but like every time I make a joke like that, someone yeah. gets after me. I've had the weirdest fucking week of people like giving me feedback for no reason. A couple of people <laughs> angry at me for like mistreating my artist, and then <laughs> the other day, somebody had to send me an email to tell me just to help me out uh, to let me know that a uh, haunted hill would be, would be more popular if I made Eva a man. Because people would feel better about agreeing with her. Wow. Yeah. Wait, that's insane. Yep. What? That doesn't even make any sense. Like the whole, if you've read it, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> people don't like it when women. Yeah, they don't. Well, you know, well, I know that's this. been my whole life. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It's, What's it's, crazy is the the crowd that complains about women in comics and graphic novels. You would think would be the crowd that like would not be reading your book too right? i oh, mean right? like, I, I, don't like know. no man i don't know like it's, i didn't really realize that was still a thing like i thought that would dude, it's rob it's always it's a thing you want it not thing to be a thing yeah <laughs> somebody um somebody posted a, a thing on facebook the other day of like the breakdown of how much women speak versus men in uh best picture winners of the past like 30 years oh really mm -hmm. and i i i commented it was like a friend of mine was posting it who knows my whole vibe and so I wrote back to her on there. I said, um, this is a really great tip. Thank you so much. I will decrease the amount of uh, women that I have in my stories from now on so I can be more successful. And, uh, you know, I got like a laugh react from her. But then some like 
fucking stranger comes in and is like, this is a really good idea. You should definitely pursue this. <laughs> more tips on how to reduce women's oh presence in stories. Oh my God. And I'm like, and I just responded like, I'm probably still not going to do that though. And he was like, oh no, here's some more hints on how it can be. Here's more examples of where it's successful. I'm like, you don't even see the fucking problem, do you? Here, here has like 80% of movies where it's successful. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like crazy yeah does that happen to you guys too like like jess do you get do you get like uh emails people are like yeah mary shelley's cool but like if it was mark shelley like if, um, if it was a little no. boy having an adventure i'd, I'd be into it <laughs> i don't strangely enough people don't email me and like come at me on social media um but oh, people good, in, nice. but in in person at conventions is when I'll occasionally have a man come to the booth who knows everything about Mary Shelley mm. and is mansplaining Mary Shelley to me. And I'm usually very polite about it. Cause I mean, I'm glad he, that he's passionate about Mary Shelley, <laughs> but the one thing, the one thing I always know about this man is he's not buying a book oh, and I yeah. have to figure out how to get him to go away. Cause he's not only offending me, but he's like low key offending me. So I can't like I'm not yeah. gonna get a fight with him. But he's also going to sit there a long time because he's got to pontificate about. We, we call those table barnacles. Table, yeah, table barnacles. And <laughs> they, when they come and they start talking about Mary Shelley, I'm like, oh God, please don't. Can we? Dude, not? I'm about right. to start a new job. <laughs> I'm about to be the fucking barnacle buster. Oh, that would be <laughs> nice. For, these aren't for the books you're looking for. Move along, sir. Yes. For the weekend, <laughs> you. Can... Well, and then, and then there's always the guy who comes just to tell me. Yeah, you know, this looks interesting. It's not my thing. Uh, I'm, not into, I'm not into it. I'm sure that happens. I don't to you guys. read comics. I don't read uh, comics. Like, I go, why did you come over here? Why are you at like, a Comic Con if you don't yeah. read yeah. comics? And and at Emerald City, I was right next to the the Lego minifig table. Oh no, <laughs> oh, that guy. <laughs> Which was good and bad, but because yeah. there was a lot of people, so I'm. But then half my table is the Lego people like leaning over trying to like, grab all desperately. The bags on your table. Yeah, they're like put all their stuff, and luckily there was one young kid who worked there who was very hardcore about you cannot put your bag on her table. Like, <laughs> oh nice, that's yeah. good. Yeah, no, nice. he was really nice, but yeah. um, I but I just my whole point to that was I had a lot of the toy people, but mm. enough book people, but that was like yeah, and the toy people like to tell you how they're not comic people yeah. and you're like okay <laughs> i i uh when i'm at conventions i my usual intro is hey what kind of comics do you like mm -hmm. and if someone says oh i don't yeah. i always say yeah reading's hard and 90 percent <laughs> of the time that gets people to leave quickly if they don't yeah. like comics every now and again someone will be like oh no i read books no i read yeah. novels and they'll then have to come over and like, like give me detailed descriptions of yeah. like the fucking lee child book that i've read recently I'm like cool congratulations i guess like, the american <laughs> education system strikes again wow that's that's i i was i was very like, like kansas city like every I, I everybody there was pretty pleasant mark wade and chris claremont butted heads in a panel for a little oh, bit that, that was been fun that was yeah. interesting i they don't let us even as press like they don't let us record at the i don't know, they like don't want to like interfere with the, i think it's silly i think all cons as many of us go as with press passes and recording like they should let people record those and like or i mean wouldn't you guys like i would if i could if I could spend like 80 bucks and like stream SDCC panels, if I'm not able to go or something, you know, like I would do that. That's just like an extra way to generate some income. I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of silly. They don't. They it isn't do that. surprising but, they don't. Isn't it up to the panels? Cause I know that there have been panels that have like been officially recorded and shown up online. I know that the, hmm. uh, there's one about like the, the like legality of fan fiction or fan art one that it like happens every year is always online about a month later. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's always free online. I, I wonder if it's really down because, because like uh, at at Jessica, were you on David's panel with me last year? Um, no, no, uh, uh no, we've only you're right, we've only done one panel together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll do more. Don't worry. Yeah, um, okay. Good. <laughs> are you on anything at WonderCon? I'm not on. Well, any I'm. I my my panel about Frankenstein did not get accepted, which I'm just sending out to the world. WonderCon, I think that was a mistake because Frankenstein's really big right now. So is Mary Shelley. Yeah. <laughs> but I am on the Mary Shelley Presents panel. I'm just not as in charge of it as I was at Emerald City. So, okay. um, yeah. So right. that I'm still on, and then I'm going to that crater thing too. But. I'm not, I'm not leaving my table at that time of the day. Yeah, um, I know. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> um, no, the the the. 
the writer's block panel um, is always recorded at, at yeah. every con because they then put it up as a podcast. So I oh. think it might actually come down to the individual panel. Nice. That makes I'll, sense. I'll, have to ask, yeah. I'll have to ask next year. Probably. Yeah, well, especially I, I put in, I want a panel or I want a mod. Like, Cause there were, there were two big panels that did not have moderators and, and Mark Wade basically had to moderate his own panel. And I was like, this is weird. And I was like, like you, you have a local podcaster that would have loved to have done this planet comic con um are but i guess they told me to say they told me to like email them and ask i was like are really you I, teasing us though like what did they butt heads over um yeah. <laughs> well it started it started out they were so mark 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 was trying to talk about how like you know in the early comic in the early days of comics there weren't like a lot of like women or people in comics like working in them or printed in them and Chris Claremont was like, well, yeah. and Mark was like, okay, but like generally, dude, I know you were writing the X-Men and you were doing stuff, but he was like, there were other comics being made. And he was like, yeah, but you know, my, my job outsold yours. So that's why you're angry. And, and like, <laughs> and then like, and I was like, everybody was like, Ooh, and then Chris like kept talking like, and Mark was like mouthing. He's wrong. He's like, but he like wasn't saying anything and he was like pointing it and I was and like uh, and Jimmy Palmiotti and Kevin Eastman are like sitting in between them and Jimmy's like this is why we sat in the middle and like because Jimmy's like hilarious right but I like it got kind of awkward for a second and then like yeah so but I was like I was like whoa but that was other than that like everybody was um everybody was really pleasant a lot of Kansas City thought that Jason Aaron is a is a black man because the guy running uh Jason Aaron's booth uh like the the guy that works for the talent agency play, place like he would be watching like jason's booth and people would come up and they'd be like oh my god jason i love your art on thor and he'd like point to the banner behind him and he was like i'm just watching the booth uh that's that's jason and and it, it is like pointing to the picture behind him and i was like dude if your beard was a little longer you guys would look the same and he started laughing i busted out my camera and started recording him and i was like i was like jason can you talk about your new ninja turtle run and he was like dude i'm not and then he saw it was me and he was like oh dear like so we had, we had fun uh but yeah no one in kansas city knew who jason aaron was i was and, I, and he like lives here i was like what he's a local legend like how do you guys not know like, he's like you guys are at a comic con like he's like got the best beard in comics you know i don't know it's like i was kind of disappointed i was like damn kansas city like you guys don't even know who jason aaron is but whatever you know well, cool. i will say uh the greatest relief of my life came last year when i realized that chris claremont doesn't remember uh most interactions he has because <laughs> if people have read if people have read one certain book of mine it tells a story where i never name him but it's the reason that I have avoided every social situation with Chris Claremont for the past uh, 15 years. And then I bumped into him at Baltimore and he had no fucking clue who I was. And I, nice. I never felt so relieved. Nice. Yeah. He, he yelled at me. He yelled at me last year. And then, uh, he, cause I was talking about, he doesn't, I didn't realize he hated Jonathan Hickman's X-Men. And so we were talking about John, I was, I mentioned how like Wolverine, Cyclops and Jean Grey were all having sex with each other on the moon and he lost his mind. <laughs> he like, got mad. But anyway, we're not here to talk about X-Men. Uh, we're, we're here to talk about werewolves and monsters and awesome comics. Uh, and there, there, some of you may be wondering like, Blake, why have you assembled this, this, this like impressive team of Kickstarter professionals on this panel? Well, there's a, there's a method to the madness. <laughs> folks and there's all of these uh this this group they're all working together to promote each other's campaigns they have different cross promotions going uh there's like some cool prints and bonuses and stickers and stuff you can get and but you have to back each campaign by the way if you click the show description or the youtube description whatever you want to call it there's links to everything right there for you you can click and go to all check out all these websites i'm going to start with richard um, cause his is already right here, but it's, this, is, this is your last day. Not even your last day. You have two hours, folks. Yep. You have two hours out there. Anybody out there? You got two hours right now. And there's a cool picture of it. We can see if you back physically back, like with, you know, like things are going to get shipped to you physically. Not like you physically walk to the library and use the computer. You have to back a physical product. Does that make sense? You got you got to really explain stuff to people sometimes, guys. Backing yeah. at the physical level. There you go. <laughs> That's how you say it. Uh, backers at the physical level of both X Wives of Frankenstein and Mary Shelley will get this awesome print from Richard. 
Uh, which he has. I love the way you draw Shell and Frank. By I was telling Jessica about this when she showed it to me. Oh my god! But this, you drew this. This is uh, based off a cartoon or an old series. Yeah. Or? So there's there's this great like there's a beautiful old cartoon called the Groovy Ghoulies. Okay, uh, which was like a, an abomination of a show. Like it's truly <laughs> awful. It's one of the most beautifully done uh, cartoons I've ever seen. And uh, what it was kind of really well known for were these incredibly long tracking shots through these like beautiful watercolor backgrounds with terrible characters just edging their way along. Um, and so I wanted to wanted to like capture that kind of vibe. So uh, this is uh, it's a it's a watercolor background, and then uh, I have drawn the drawn the characters separately and like put them in as they would have been done in an old animation. Like almost cel shaded, yeah. Yeah, tr I'm trying to find a way to actually like reproduce this like an animation cell and, and have it oh, for myself. Cool. Um, oh, that would be cool. I, I haven't yet figured out how to do it. Like printing it just on acetate, printing the top part on acetate, like is too transparent. Mm. I gotta find there. There must be someone who can actually do that without having to paint it. I, there's gotta be. I don't. I mean, I was so excited when you just sent me the background because it was so beautiful. I'm like, oh, I want to go hang out and down in that lab. And then when you <laughs> sent me with the characters, I was like, oh, they're having, I think, a party. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I, I wanted, I like the idea that they're, like they're Frank like, would be like looking up at the bride and be like, yes. there's, there's that hot lady that was yeah. made for me. And, <laughs> uh, originally, I was going to have, um, I was going to have Shell actually sort of like floating. Cause I really mm. wanted to show her shoes. I did draw her shoes. The shoes um, are fun. And, and there was just kind of no way to make it really look good with the format of it. You know, what's um, funny about those shoes is that they were my daughter's shoes. We mm -hmm. got them at a thrift store and Anna and I were trying to figure out the shoes. And I finally just took a picture of them and said, these are the shoes, put these shoes on her. <laughs> that was for the first book though. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Richard, did you, did you paint the background of yeah. this? You yeah. say, Oh, wow. That's so cool. Like I said, I hate computers. <laughs> well, I know you hate computers, but I just, I didn't I didn't know if like I don't know. There's like markers and chalk and I don't know, colored <laughs> no, pencils. <laughs> no, that one's that one's all painted. Um, could have, you could have crushed up flower petals and 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 used your fifth sweat of your finger to I'm not <laughs> push that, it into the grain of the paper. Like I have limits. I'm not going to deal with nature. <laughs> I mean, there is definitely paper mache involved in a couple of your covers, right? Yeah, all all, all my ex wives' covers are paper mache, and then my, oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, they're all big physical. I can hang on. I'll I'll be right back. <laughs> That's uh, who they did that with. Um, I I found this out. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. The old Sandman covers. Like I never realized that those oh, were really? all like. Yeah, like built in like photo boxes with weird trinkets and shit, and they took pictures of them. And there's oh, all like, cool. oh yeah, there's like, I mean, there's crazy. Sense, like, yeah, like I, I but I, I guess it's funny now because like a lot of stuff now, you're like, oh, like a digital designer probably did that to make it look real, dude. That's hold on, hold <laughs> on, I gotta, I wanna make. Uh... Oh yeah, that's crazy. That's awesome. So it's the. It's, I, I, the original idea was that they would, uh, the box would be able to be closed, and then I made the, this hand too big. Um, but <laughs> two cell phones that are glued or taped are stuck in in different ways, and it's fine. Who needs cell phones? <laughs> Everybody. Uh <laughs> the, the wonderful thing about not being on a phone plan is every time a phone breaks, I have to buy a fucking new one, and then I get to like find some new way to use it. If you if you watch <laughs> the video on my Kickstarter, like it's it's filmed on I think from five different angles. Is it like five yeah. different phones? Like yeah, it's it's uh it's four phones and one uh, uh, three phones and two laptops, oh, all, nice. on, all recording the same Zoom call. Nice. <laughs> Oh, so there it is. Oh, yeah. There's the, there's the, there's the cover. Uh, this is the, this is the second issue. And 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 I'm um. Here's some of the Richards. I, I Richard is his illustrations are, like I love them so much. Um. But you got you still got like stock of like issue one. Like you, people yeah. can get both still. Yeah. Okay. Issue so, one. Yeah. All all these boxes behind me are issue one. Oh my my. <laughs> all those boxes are issue one. <laughs> nice. Um, so it's, and then so yeah, there's a there's a couple different covers, and you guys can get the the back issues. Oh, that's good, that's cool. I'm a huge well, I'm a huge fan of this series. Like, I got the first one and was like 
just instantly fell in love with it. I love the art. I love the story. It's such a fun, cool take on the idea of like these X, Y. I mean, I don't, I don't want to pitch your thing for you, but um, I'm a huge fan of this series. So like when Richard was like suggested doing this print, I was like, yes, <laughs> I know everyone from both our campaigns really wants both of our stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, just cause it's such a cool, I mean, it's such a fun story um, about like the, at the bride mom i'm doing a terrible job richard take over <laughs> all right it is yeah. um it's yeah. I, I i gotta do this so it sounds natural because i've done it yeah. really well i just set you up in an unnatural way i apologize no no it's, it's wonderful <laughs> um and also like you're right everyone from both our campaigns should back every both yes, campaigns for sure she should uh so and it, robs it, don't and, and, yes and we're robs. gonna get to robs for <laughs> sure <laughs> but, but rob and i haven't done a cross promo and how dare he uh <laughs> 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 um to be like, to be like Mark and Chris all over again. <laughs> you know what, we should, what we should do uh, is, if we all line up again, we should. Ex I can paint more of the background, and we can extend the prints. Ooh. They all join up, and we can start putting some werewolves in there. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got no more characters to add of mine, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is. Uh, it's Elizabeth Frankenstein and the Bride of the Monster on the day they find out that their husbands are alive. Uh, living as a gay couple in the Arctic and returning to the city as heroes of Reddit, Twitter, and the MRA movement. Uh, it is two women who have been pitted against each other by society, by men, by literal monsters, uh, who, despite not liking each other, know that no one else will possibly understand what they're about to be dragged back into. It's drawn beautifully. Oh my goodness, Great. is it? I, I, so I remember when you were drawing this, because you were you were talking online about how, why you decided to do this to yourself basically. But then you've like, you pulled it off so well. And, but then I'm scrolling through and it like, you did it again here with like these ice cubes. You've, you've got several like really like fresh and chaotic and unique like viewpoints that yeah, are those panels are crazy. Awesome. Like, yeah, dude, like this is, this is a next level layout. Uh, well, it's like, you know, I, I've been doing this for 32 years every day um, with pro almost no days where I didn't draw comics in that time. Wow. And, um, you know, like my big challenge is how do I not get bored? Like I have to find ways to make this hard to do because it's, it's, it's so much faster to draw a, a difficult page than an easy one because the easy one you get distracted. And mm -hmm. with this book, especially like it's, it, it is two people kind of like going through the stages of a really difficult, long conversation across the course of one day. And I have to find ways to make that as visually captivating as possible. Cause I don't have like explosions or monster. I mean, I have a monster, I guess, but like, you know, I don't, I don't have the big action stuff. I don't have the, the, you know, swirly magic color, whatever it's, it's all, it is, it is all finding ways to like turn the metaphor of the, of the piece into the visual reality. Nice. By the way, you're uh, Richard, now an award-winning. Oh, yeah. Um, I should really update that. Yes, I won the GLAAD Award last week for Four Color Heroes. That's so cool. Well deserved. Yeah. Well deserved. <laughs> well, well deserved. Just I, I, I don't have the trophy with me. If I did, I would just be holding it casually. I think I'm going to start just carrying it everywhere I go. <laughs> I w yeah, I would. Like, when I when I did win an award in college, like they, I mean, I got money, but they didn't. I got like they put my name in a book. Like I didn't get, I didn't even get like a piece of paper or a plaque or, like it was just like, and then here you go, a sticker, hundred bucks, a little badge to put. Yeah, on I know. Shirt. Now, yeah. I mean, to be fair, like the hundred bucks was cool. Like you know, I was like, I wasn't like like give me a trophy, not a hundred dollars. <laughs> but you know, I was like, it's just like looking back, it's like man, like there's no like dat, like there's no database of like the of the uh john latosi creative writing award of like at umkc <laughs> they, <laughs> they give it away every year so like you know i could say like you could like look it up and be like well i googled that blake and <laughs> nothing pops up by the way or like something does from like 2002 but anyway like so yeah there's like no proof that i won this <laughs> that i won this award here's a couple uh, of tips for the people who want trophies okay one if you buy, just go to a trophy store and buy a trophy <laughs> yeah. and donate it to a school, they will put your name on it and give it out every year. There are a number of schools in the world who give out the Richard Fairgray Award for Excellence in Basketball. <laughs> really because I have bought them and sent them to the schools. That's uh, oh my God. Yeah, that's funny. Two, 
you can buy Olympic medals on eBay pretty cheap. Okay. So, you know, if you want to say that you're really good at a sport, just choose the medal and wear it. Um, and the presidential uh, medal of fitness, whatever things, you can buy those really cheap. I have like the tie pin. I have a little briefcase clip. I have a bunch of the things. So, wow. yeah. All right. Well, that's true. I just, now I just, I'm, like, I'm on Etsy right now. I'm yeah, right. I, was about, <laughs> <laughs> I need that. I like, My kid just had to do that um, fitness thing last week. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if uh, they still get a pin or anything. We'll find out, but. Yeah. I I remember, I remember one of the last years I played football because I didn't like playing football and my dad really wanted me to. And I was mm -hmm. like a big kid, you know? And so everybody's like, that kid's going to play football. And I was like, no, nah, I'd rather play final fantasy. And they were like, loser. <laughs> but anyway, like, uh, uh, I, the, one of the last years I played football, we didn't win a game. And, uh, I missed, a, I remember like I missed a fumble, like at the, at the end of the, like at the end of the game. And like, I, I knew I should have jumped on this ball and I, chased it instead right and this other kid got it i'm i do i remember like crying like the whole season right lost every yeah. damn game uh you know didn't uh it didn't bother me that much but that like that like hit me i was like you you fucked up you know and i and, and i was like crying everybody's like blake it's okay like we love you dude da, da, da. and uh and that but that we sucked so bad that we didn't even get a trophy like they like i i was like i, I was at that cutoff age where like uh before people started getting like everybody got a trophy like mm -hmm. i i was a kid and our football team was so terrible <laughs> we didn't even get a tro we got like a pity pizza party from coach and <laughs> like but no no trophy or accreditation or, or anything you're just a bunch the of pity pe the, pe the pity pizza party is actually the best it, it was yeah. goal i just announced for my campaign if i hit uh let's say Fifteen thousand dollars tonight in the next hour and a half. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get Blake a trophy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we should all cross do this. Like the three of us will sponsor yeah, the trophy. If everybody's campaign hits fifteen thousand dollars, I mean, the end of Rob's stream. might. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rob's like, shit. I'm gonna have to get Blake a trophy. Like, shut yeah, up, yeah, guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> The werewolf award. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I, I, oh, that's great. That's perfect. <laughs> they, yeah, this is uh, something I've been sitting on trying to figure out. Ooh, that seems it. uncomfortable. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. In more ways than one. <laughs> like here. Uh, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Always within arm's reach. Did, yes, uh, no, so, J Jessica, did you meet? You met Richard on that on that uh, Travis on Travis's live stream, didn't you? I was that when they and they you were back in everybody's campaign and they they oh, called you well, that's out. That's not for, when I met Richard. Oh, I thought that's when you guys met each. Okay. No, we. I don't know. We. I knew of Richard and we met. I think at physically at Festival of the Books with Charlie when you mm. mentioned that. Okay. And then we actually hung out at Emerald City Comic Con. Okay. So, yeah. but and we're yeah, hang out at WonderCon too. It's gonna yes, be great. Yes, we will. We're gonna hang out again. Yeah. We enjoyed it the first time. We're gonna try it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like but, Kickstarter yeah. campaign, so it's always a letdown for the second one. Yeah, it's gonna. I'm, gonna, I'm only gonna half show up for that one. <laughs> I'll back uh, at the. Sorry, the Jessica. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll. I'll wait for the trade. <laughs> I'm going to get a digital drink. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that's, that's I actually, funny. I actually do it back a lot digitally because I can't have any more comics in my house. So I was just kind of yeah. thinking about that. Um, so if I want to actually get comics, I have to do many of them. Digitally. Yeah, I kind of need to start doing that, too. If you could see the pile up that's yeah. uh, from mm -hmm. the floor up back there behind me. Yeah, I've, I've I've several times actually the wall behind Rob you can see, which is funny because there's like the boxes in front of the wall of boxes are gone from the last time I talked to you. Anyway. Yes, I actually got a storage unit, so my, oh. my throne of boxes are gone <laughs> for the 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 shelf. Because <laughs> I I remember because you you had well I mean you're I'm sure all of you are, are getting like Richard you're getting there Rob's done a lot of campaigns Jess you're going to get there eventually you're I mean you you keep you keep doing these campaigns you keep doing these hardcovers you're going to have these this like a you know box of shell boxes of shell i mean i'm not going to turn my screen to show you the six boxes <laughs> that are sitting right next to like, me i have no shame my, <laughs> my room is what it is well 
you know, we were supposed to build a shed and then the strike happened. So we put it on pause. Oh, so now yeah. all this stuff is just in my house and I don't have a huge house. So it's kind of like, you know, I've been creative with it. I'm like, oh, this is just where I set my stuff now. <laughs> I, I actually just got rid of my storage unit yeah. um, because I, I just I just moved into a new place that has an insane amount of storage. Oh, nice. oh cool. Um, so I have I have just last week transported the 97 boxes of comics that have been that for, for that is just this past year um into the house but wow. i figure at the rate that i'm selling as long as i only get nine boxes of comics per campaign i can keep up with like i can keep that number about steady how many comics is in a box uh it's it's a little over 100 per box okay, so, so you're looking so nine you're boxes at covers a thousand copies. okay yeah. damn that's a lot of some stacks stacks <laughs> stacks on stacks and it got to the point where my wife was like you need to get rid of these i remember you've you've mentioned that in several streams yeah. robert yeah. i did not i i was not going to bring it up but you <laughs> oh, no, no, my, my wife, like, my wife, my wife type, she, she will tell me about shutting down the wolf <laughs> production train guys <laughs> I just I hid my some of my pistol comics that are they're in my closet. It looks like they're not there. I'm like, oh, they're gonna come out when I re-release all of them, but I just, <laughs> they have to be unseen or I'll be in trouble. So, oh yeah. <laughs> so I just have to get rid of more clothes. I'm like, okay, I don't get those clothes anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I'm, I'm the same. I've I've gotten I've gotten better at at buying books. I also I'm just busier now. But like I, yeah, I I um. After after I was unemployed for a few months, like when I started making money again, I I, uh, I wasn't into the uh, idea of like blowing my paycheck on like comics and stupid shit right away anymore. Right? Like I was like, that's I was the like, best no, way. We, we have to protect <laughs> our money. We have to like, we have to, like hold on to it. And then you know, and I you know of course I still don't save anything, but I, I I don't know what I spend it on. But oh, like a camera and lights and shit now. But like mm -hmm. you know I I've gotten slightly more responsible. Um. But yeah, no, I I also like I subscribe to like the Marvel and DC services now, um, and like Hoopla and stuff. So like I try and utilize, uh, you know, more of that. Um, so I'm sorry. I mean, it's time community. to start. I don't calling. buy your books. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Being honest, I'm I'm an asshole. Uh, no, that's uh, that's why I do this. I have pure Catholic guilt, like Richard, like Richard <laughs> said earlier. <laughs> I cancel campaigns and then schedule you on my show and then it's fine. I don't feel bad about it anymore. I'm just, I still feel bad about it all the time. Uh, you canceled after I was on your show, Blake. You did it oh, the right, wrong way. Right. Right. That's right. fine. You didn't well. have me on your show out of guilt. <laughs> That's what, all right, cool. As long as there's, there's some kind of narrative that <laughs> makes me seem like a normal weasel. Um, no. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, everybody like there's only, uh, there's less than two hours left to, to check out Richard's, uh, campaign. And then, and then he's going to go right into another one and take you for another crazy Richard ride. And, which we'll, we'll talk about. And but, I definitely backed Richard's at the physical level. It's very good. So you should get it that way. <laughs> yeah, you should. You <laughs> should. And, and, and Snowpaw. Yes. Yeah. And Snowpaw. I wanted to say I backed R Richard at the physical level. I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> Well, because you said our friendship was going to be digital drinks. You wanted yeah, to yeah. yeah. I wanted to say, like, I back you at the physical. I see you in the digital. Our social <laughs> interactions are only at the digital level, but my belief in you is at the physical, physical level. Yes. So, like, <laughs> I don't want to be near you, but I have your back. <laughs> yes. Jessica and I are, are doomed to do like infinite conventions together at this point, though. Because, like, are you doing Festival of Books again? Yep. Okay. Nice. I like Festival of Books. I always do it yeah. now. Yeah. All Where's right, that one at? We have San Diego after that. Mm -hmm. Nothing in between, though. So we no. get two months off from each other. Yeah, so we'll be okay. <laughs> That's one of the books is at USC. It's a free event. It's okay. huge. It's um, I mean, it's more book centric than comic centric, but okay. um, it's really great. It's like this two day free event at the end of April, and just thousands and thousands of people come. All the big authors come, and yeah. so like, will you be pushing more? Or will you do like both? Will you be like Plastic Girl and Mary Shelley? Or will you push Plastic Girl more if it's I more usually, of a prose crowd? I usually focus on Plastic Girl at the Festival of the Books, but mm -hmm. I will be pushing Mary Shelley as School for Monsters La Llorona because, I mean, we did get nominated. Well, I'm a finalist for the... Mm -hmm. uh, Indies Forward, and so is Richard. We are yeah. competing now. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Fighting so to the death. <laughs> no, we got we got Monica in there, so we might, you know, I don't know, but the um, but yeah, so usually I do focus on the my, I, I write novels as well, so I'll focus on my climate, YA, nice. eco punk, sci fi 
trilogy I did. Um, but yeah, I will have Mary Shelley hardcover though. So, cool. Yeah. Rob, do you do a lot of conventions? Like, you... uh, yeah, yeah. Mostly like on the, um, Northeast. Um, Where do you live? I'm North of Pittsburgh, South of Erie. Like okay. legit, I can get the Cleveland, Erie and Pittsburgh in the same amount of time. Okay. okay. Like, um, and I'm right on the border of Ohio, OMPA. So okay. I'm like away from everybody. Like, <laughs> like everybody <laughs> I talk to on these things, nobody's near me. I am so far by myself. Yeah. I like Pittsburgh. I've been there, but <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I've never been to, but yeah. like, I, I, there's nothing there. Well, Rob's there, but other than that, there's nothing. There. I'm actually <laughs> north of it. No. Oh, Rob's I, not, yeah. even I'm not even there. Not even there. Speaking of not even there, uh, I have totally ignored the chat that's that keeps talking to this. Oh, I can't. So real quick, I just want to say, I just want to say hi to everybody. Uh, Pierre was in here before we were. Pierre was like ready to go. Thank you so much for always tuning in. Uh, my buddy Ronan tuning in from across the planet. Always, always happy to have you. Uh, John Westoff, uh, uh, another uh, cool Kickstarter creator. Um, uh, Alice Rose says, uh, that she will never get sick of any of you. So that's good. That's, that's <laughs> nice. That's nice to know. I think, think I'm sure that everybody appreciates that. Uh, and, uh, what's up Gareth. Happy to have you. Uh, Nicole, uh, is saying loves the, loves the energy torches and, and, and applauding as we were talking about the, uh, the campaigns and Sarah Landauer in the house, uh, saying she may stop by if you guys are at WonderCon. uh, Sarah, uh, another great indie creator has been on the show. Uh, okay. a couple times um but yeah she does a real cool book called glitch uh with with a very 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 bright gorgeous uh animation um but yeah so everybody thanks thanks for tuning in chat happy to happy to have you thanks for thanks for tuning in uh, and if you're going to be here you might as well get those wallets out and those credit cards ready and get on down to kickstarter spend some money get you some stickers and prints if you back at the Real tier of physicality. How do we say that? <laughs> the real tier of physicality. <laughs> that sounds like we're going like Loki's taking us there. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. It, uh, and then uh, speaking of, I guess well, uh, to uh, to to go off of that, let me get uh, let me get get Rob's uh, campaign pulled up here. So this is the the second Mary Shelley uh, cross promo. This one you guys got. A little bit more time you got you got eight days to to ponder this one all right so you can yep. ponder this one you know give it some pondering all right think about it stare don't through the window do don't it. think about it too don't, long don't think about it don't yeah. think about it okay don't yeah that, that's <laughs> right just just pay just get the money out and pay like why ask questions I mean, look look at that character yeah look, look 434 backers can't be wrong Jeez. you could be yeah. 435 you mm -hmm. you right there you'd be 435 <laughs> go do it i'll wait i'll wait we'll, we'll wait for you I'm just kidding. That'd be weird. I'm not going to do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> as, as Jessica mentioned, like uh, we, we, we made that 15th. So like uh, we're almost in the Blake's buzz trophy territory. Rob didn't really agree to it, but you know, uh, I got it recorded on footage somewhere. That, uh, uh, no, just... <laughs> You've got you. You've got it covered. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, always uh, like, like, like I said, uh, the Rob's got a, a very, uh, very loyal, uh, bat following. Um, and, and I love, they always send him pictures and stuff. We'll see that. And he always puts them real cool on the campaign. Yeah, too. I, I uh, love to, uh, see the pictures and uh, post them up. Um, you know, obviously with their permission. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, my, my wolf pack, um, you know, they, they come hungry for the, you know, the hunt and, and they would just come like the first few days and just think you build from there. Nice. <laughs> And awesome, Gore. You always you're you're um very much like the crew you run with, right? Because like again, like I, you know, I met you through like like Stickney and, and David Byrne and, and and a lot of those guys, and yeah. and they they are all very good at finding really good artists to do really cool variant covers. And you have uh you've you've you're you tinker. You you find some really cool uh artists to do great pieces for you, as we can as we can see. Uh, just some really, really gorgeous stuff. And then, yeah, you get Mog does your interiors too, which mm -hmm. is it's like, how dare you? That's not even fair. Um, <laughs> I don't like, I don't know what he did. I've wondered for a lot because she doesn't do, I don't think she does a lot. She does a lot of covers, but she, like, uh, yeah. So Snowpaw one and two were her first two sequentials. And then yeah. she did Rock, Ruxy Vampire for Kurt Zauer. Okay. Um, and then she jumped back into Snowpaw three. And I do believe she's doing more for Kurt. Okay. Uh, if he does a two for Ruxy, 
Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I got her, got her into a, that four, uh, four issue contract. Oh, <laughs> evil man. <laughs> I love Mog. Her art's yeah. beautiful. And she's just, and she's like, you hung out, you got to hang out with her. You guys like went to dinner. I did. Like- I reached out to them cause I had done on this SketchUp show where they made me draw, which was evil, oh, but yeah? I still did it. <laughs> that, I still that, did that, it. So? What? Was that with Christy? No, with it was a mog and they both oh. have they have a yeah they have they have uh, oh they have I didn't know yeah. she did, though. oh yeah yeah yep. and and uh, I so I met them that, that way and well on the internet you meet people and then yeah we had dinner and that was nice I was like it was good to get to know them nice yeah she's she she did the show she did the show, last time you were on Rob she was on I th- yeah I we yeah. yeah we uh, when we first launched Snowball we did a lot together yeah um now her schedule's so packed that like she's just like i don't have time <laughs> yeah she definitely like she hung out for a little bit but i mean like this was like this was like the old panel days right the shows went long and blake was blake got drunk right and like <laughs> so like i was like lit and it was late and and she like she was laughing and having a great and i think she even had a glass of wine or something but yeah, she, she was yeah, she had, like she's she, she has this big chalice of wine that she was yeah while she was doing it <laughs> yeah she was like she was like guys i'm uh I'm I can't hang anymore. I'm done. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, she was uh, she was very cool. Um and and I I you guys make you guys make cool comics, uh as as you guys can see. Uh very just Rob's whole werewolf universe. So I'm just I kind of I kind of live for it. It's very cool, it's very fun. Uh and it's it's the arts, the art's cool. He's got a oh he's got this die cut hardcover that's so freaking gorgeous. Oh yeah, yeah, I actually have it uh, right here. He and, always uh, does Yo, hold on, yeah. let me make it. Oh, that's cool. That's so it's so dope. It's such a cool hardcover. And this is the fun thing to do when I'm on these things. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh yeah, volume actually volume two for this um is gonna be coming out in, in the late spring. So oh, wow. Yeah, there'll be another die cut. How many so wait, how many because the first one has does it have four issues in it? Yeah, it's got the first four issues and then 16 additional story pages. Okay. And then pinup art. So it's like at 152 pages. Okay. I plan on doing the same, so it'll be five through eight plus sixteen additional. Um, I have uh, Travis Gibb coming back. I have um, Clay Adams. I have um, Kat Calamia, and I have Pat Shan each doing guest uh, stories. Whoa, nice! How do you find? How does Pat Shan find time to do anything? What? The, how do you but, like? You could ask him. I I was like, hey, hey, Pat, when's that coming? Hey, Pat, when's that coming? <laughs> <laughs> Travis is like, yeah, you got to keep on Pat. <laughs> yeah, oh, I bet. Yeah, he's just uh, got. He's got a whole like he, him and his, him and his buddies have like a whole production studio now. Yeah, like, yeah. They're, like, they're doing a Kickstarter campaign a month. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. I, yeah, he he managed to squeeze me in. Like he did it over a weekend when he was in Vegas, and then he like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he and I worked on the edits over like the the different time period. <laughs> nice. What what is amazing about Pat is his ability to multitask. I have been like. I've literally been in conversation with him on the phone and I can hear him typing and he'll be talking <laughs> like he'll be responding to things I'm saying. I'm like, what are you doing right now? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm writing a book. I'm like, you're <laughs> how? What? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you could do that. That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know if he's writing books, but he does, he, he does in shows sometimes he'll, he'll, he types and he forgets to mute his mic. And so like people will be talking and it, 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 it'll be like, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> stop working like <laughs> stop it pat uh but no yeah he's that that's cool i, lo- I love pat uh I, again like early like early blake's buzz all the all the success and luck i've had like started with getting to know you all and 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 promoting kickstarter campaigns and now that i'm better than all of you and surpassed kicks i'm just kidding uh, i will never but I, people someone said that to me the other day they were like they're like well you you're like you're, you know I mean, you don't you don't talk to like people like us anymore and i was like well i do like someone doesn't watch my show because i very much still have kickstarter people on uh but like um especially the live streams because like you know the bigger names they're like i'm not gonna talk to you at seven o'clock at night like that's family time and like you know they're like they're, you're like you're gonna interview me in the middle of the day uh which like most people don't get like now that i don't have a real or i have a real day job that's flexible right so i, I get away with that but anyway um long story short i i owe i owe my life to kickstarter and i like every everything even now i like got metal ninja studios is our our main our main you know nut that we harvest for the winter comes from kickstarter clients so like i would literally i would literally be dead on the fucking street if it wasn't for kickstarter like uh so you know thank you everybody but i mean i i a lot of you guys i met like early on and you guys were on the show um long time ago and and 
for some, for some reason are back. I don't know, but like, <laughs> I'm happy, happy to have you. Uh, but you know, just always, always appreciative. And, um, I'll, I'll remember you guys, even when I'm big and famous, I swear, even when like, <laughs> You know, uh, no, I'm just joking. Um, no, I'll look, forget look. you so fast. No, we'll, 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 we'll forget you. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a, I feel like you guys are the ones that, because, uh, because, like, I don't know, like, I feel like Jez's campaigns are are like, we had a hard time keeping up with graphics for the first week of Mary Shelley. I feel, you know, it was like we we were like, oh, we we like you know like oh, too many people back. Like we have, you know, and it was just like that's a, it's a great problem to have, right? But like jessica's campaign just it it, it started and, and took off and and then last year the la, the la Llorona hardcover did, did the same thing that was a, that was a great that was a fun campaign uh, you know rob you've always done real well uh rich richard is the same way like richard's always got uh you know he does a lot of projects and everything is like just so polished and amazing and, and, and like he said there's not there's not a lot of other people doing what he's doing both like style and how like visually on the page and, and just narratively you, you rat bastard you're just too good i don't well, know <laughs> I, i'm really excited about this snowpaw because i just watched wolf walker again oh yeah i don't i i always watch like those three animations um they're irish animations it's um the secret of the kells song of the sea and wolf walkers and i know that your snowpaw is not a wolf walker necessarily but do you know the mythology yeah yeah okay yeah uh, I, I figured you did but yeah the, the imagery and stuff yeah I, I i don't like okay. I, this is interesting <laughs> hold on let's uh, well no just the idea that a if you're a wolf walker like um well you're awake you're human and when you sleep you turn into a wolf and you are wolf at, you're a wolf at night and Ooh, so like your yeah. body's like never at rest oh that's yeah like, it's a little that's like heartbreaking <laughs> and terrifying and scary that sounds like a fucking dream I dream, but yeah, I mean, just the imagery and the art and everything was just kind of making me think. Well, just because I watched it on Sunday, and so I, and I was looking at your campaign, and so it's like really, and I'm excited for Mog's cover because I did get that one. But yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. What yeah. is the best tier? What's the best tier, Rob? Uh, I guess it depends on where. I mean, you if, are, you're a, yeah. if you're a continuing <laughs> uh, fan, um, there's you know, uh, there's plenty of great covers. Um, you know, there's the the Omega tier where you can get all the swag and get all mm -hmm. the new covers. Or if you're like a brand new, um, there's plenty of catch up tiers um, where you can even catch up on like uh night wolf as well as all the snow paws. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, good stuff, uh, you know, to catch up for, for new and um, returning back member or back members. Nice. Also no, look at how happy all these people are. <laughs> They're so happy. I need to do this. This is cute. The, um, so we do our crossover. Are you going to talk about the crossover, Lake, or should I? Oh, yeah. Hey, well, uh, yeah. If you want to click on the crossover link on the side there, it'll take you right But down. we haven't gone through the whole campaign. I'm sorry. I didn't mean oh, to. that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Let's go through it all. We have I, to it's, it's, it's a that. very long page. I That's <laughs> that's like one thing that I'm like, I need to learn how to consolidate. <laughs> I, didn't, for, I didn't know you could do this, by the way. I didn't know you that's could put little uh emojis Yeah, they just added that like within oh, the last six I months. Oh. I didn't know you could do that either. Yeah. That's, this, oh, has been, this has been my new today. deal because I I write I write copy for kick for some people's Kickstarter pages now and so like I totally nerd out on this list over here like <laughs> I don't do the symbols but like you, you know you, it's like you want it to be like clean and clear but also like you don't want it to be like table of contents you know like <laughs> which one the tears like how generic can I make? but it's like it it, it does like you know, anyway so I just I think about that a lot now. Think about a lot of stuff, guys. You guys think about stuff. I'm sorry. No, they, never. You guys ever think? <laughs> no, I'm not sure I ever stop. I mean, yeah, I'll be yeah, that's two the problem. In the morning, going go to sleep. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was up at from three to six today, and I was so upset. I was like, because I can't really work at that time. Like, I get up and pretend oh, like, yeah. I'm gonna like work, and then I just stare at my computer like. Uh. <laughs> See, I have oh, this, that's like, hey, this is Schmalky. I was I was gonna ask you who this cover was because yeah, like yeah, it. yeah, yeah, Joseph Schmalky. Yeah, he. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's, he he did one for Nightwolf as well, and um, I had asked him to do one for Snowpaw issue one, but he was so busy back when he was like still with Scout. Mm. Um, but then like I knew like that he was doing his own thing for a while, and I'm like, hey, so I reached back out, and I'm like, hey, you have time now. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, he's he's a he's a busy dude. Oh, um, he's, he's amazing. Like it, it, I got to hang out with him once in uh, Philadelphia at a con. Oh, is he cool? Oh, so cool. Nice. Like one of the nicest guys I think I've ever met. Nice. Yeah, he's 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 one I'd like to 
like to pick. I'd like to pick. I, I like the horror guys. They they're very they're they're very interesting because I remember when I started doing interviews and I thought I can't remember who the first real like pure horror writer I talked to was, but it w- might have been John Lee's. He was like mm-hmm. the first time I talked to him. But I just like yeah, like and then Emily is gone or and then Emily was gone is mm-hmm. is a beautiful, terrifying, gross, gothic body horror comic, right? And it like. It like oozes like you can feel the pages it's like it's gross in the best way well, right yeah, John has a way uh, and and i was like you know i was like god whoever wrote this is screwed up right and now i finally got to interview him and he's like the happiest nicest charming guy who is just like all smiles and laughs and just like happy to be here oh and, and his scottish accent too makes it even better oh i know yeah <laughs> Oh, he's, he's, he's amazing. Um, but yeah, like there's like all those, all those horror guys are just like, they're, they're all, uh, they're all very, very funny. All of, all of you, like, I know your, your horror is, is a little bit different. Like, like Jess, yours is, is all ages and a little brighter, but as, as I mentioned, like there's like some real intense, like Frank and shell, like, like reliving their past trauma. And it's, so it's like, it's for all ages, but you're like not scared to like get heavy and real and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, like it's so it's, it's not like terror, but it's very, it's very intense and creepy and it, it like jostles you. Right. But I uh, feel like that, you know, we learned that from the, all of the eighties yeah. content that we had growing <laughs> oh, up. Yeah. I mean, we had the, like the secret of Nim and all those oh my like, God, dark, the secret dark, of like dark crystal, all those like really dark things for kids. But like if you you know if you actually you were, that, you're traumatized by <laughs> no you were never just having a nice story there was gonna be something horrific happening somewhere in it like, <laughs> for it to happen <laughs> and secret and him is one of my all time favorites and I'm like oh my god it. the owl my daughters. Yeah. oh yeah oh yeah. the owl I I remember like the owl and the rats like I was very like watching mm-hmm. that I love that movie but it, it made me like very uncomfortable like it freaked me out like a yeah. lot. I've That's still scary. never seen that movie. I've read the book. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wait, there's I, a book? There's oh yeah, yeah the book's it, first. It's, yeah, it's, it's, book it's based on a book. And uh my favorite bit in the book is there are these there are these other rats that were from Nim mm-hmm. who like went off on their own and they were like the kind of the 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 bad rats who didn't want to be part of the society. Um and they're so threatening, and then there's just this like this story on the news about these six rats who were found dead, like in an, uh, in a, in, uh, an electronics store. <laughs> and like just this implication that they had been going off to like steal electronics to make something else is like so chilling. And then someone was like, that's not in the movie. And I was like, I'm not going to watch that movie then. Well, it's really lame. It's not in the movie because it is one of the best parts, you know, like what is this other, that's someone should fanfic that. Well, I wonder they do if they show have... them stealing things. Yeah. In the no, book. It's true. Like they do allude to it, but not like mm. going into an electronic store. Yeah. There's just something so sinister they don't get about slaughtered. like, <laughs> just like this threatening presence that's there that you don't ever get to see. And then, Oh, they're dead. Yeah, you know, like the, the, the kind of the moral tale that you have to imagine of like this is the life I could have chosen. I can't believe I didn't know that it was a book. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like shook. Watership right Down was another book too, with the one with the rabbits. Yeah, yeah. like that. That. Oh one, yeah, that. I, that. that I, yeah. That was a. That was a. As my wife would call it, a Benjamin Buttons, because it's so sad. <laughs> that one, yeah, that one is really sad. You know, another. This one's not a classic though. It's new. Um, is stories for young foxes have you guys read that so that gets that's like um almost like folk tales like old foxes telling it to the younger foxes to teach them but they're all horrific like i read them to my child and we were both like this is terrible i like that was through the book i'm like i'm afraid (laughs) and it's like a middle grade horror but it's like middle grade horror like we got you know where you're just like legitimately going this is like there was a rat a rabies story that was like a zombie thing and you know just yeah it was very creepy but i just they, bought the um the hardcover collection of the scary stories we tell in the dark the, oh like, nice are they all three books were in a hardcover it was on oh, sale cool. in october for like 17 bucks so i snagged it now i read a couple of them uh, and then you know it, it's the prose was okay but like the illustrations and i mm-hmm. i remember like i remember them freaking me out like as a kid kind of oh, yeah. like yeah. but there, there's like one where they're like Oh, like the, every time the, the lights go out, like these shadows come closer and like the power goes out and the 
kids trying to tell the parents that like no these shadows are going to kill us and the parents are like you're our stupid kid you don't know you know <laughs> and then like the the candle goes out you know at the end and it was just like i don't know like it, it and i'm 38 years old and like still like mm. it, when the power goes out i think of that story so like <laughs> regardless of like how great the prose is you know like that book still did it did something cool to me right you know and that's that's why i love books and and also by the way that's why if anyone ever is like don't read that it's trash like never listen to them like formulate your own opinions i used to listen to i i listened to a college advisor for a long time uh and and like they told me like not to uh you know like you need to basically told me i was reading like too much pulp modern stuff and and like and then one of one of this guy, Dr. Shu at UMKC, like said one of the coolest things to me ever. And he said, no one can tell you what real literature is. He was like, no one. And he, he was like, he was like, they can try. Um, it, it, but he was like, it's 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 just different. And, and language is studied across like so many different like spheres and elements. And, and, and he was like, so there, there's like in the terms of like academia and language, like you can't say what's like high and lowbrow literature really because it can all it can all be like a a viewpoint into culture or whatever right so well, anyway yeah, yeah. and then uh, like I, that I, way too like when it came to like art school like i remember like going to class and then having critiques and like all the professors having their own opinions and like i'm like you know what that's just your like i felt like the dude i was like well that's just like your opinion man <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> what were you about to say jess Oh, no, I was just saying the same thing, like with comics, you know, or graphic novels, like there's still people who are like, that's not real reading. And even though, you know, the studies show that it really helps kids learn how to read. And I mean, even like kids in my daughter's class, like she prefers graphic novels to chapter books mm -hmm. and things like that. And she's had a few of them, you know, say kind of like, well, you're not really reading, you know, you're looking at this thing. And I'm like, and she got, I remember she got really upset. She came home and I was just like, it is really reading. It, yep. It's actually even better because it's like it's not better. I mean, it's but it's connecting different. You're it's making yeah, your brain your brain works. Your brain is processing the story in a different way, and allowing you to form different neural pathways that a regular book isn't. You know, mm -hmm. and a regular book is doing that too. So you should do both. But like, yeah, just the idea that there's real re literature. There's one way to read, one way not to read. You know, it's it. Yeah, it's silly. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just agreeing. I'm agreeing with you guys. <laughs> Imagine yeah. like college age Blake and a professor just shouting at him, podcasts <laughs> don't even exist. Yet. I'll make one. Yeah. I'll yeah. show you. <laughs> Does anyone remember the show Erie, Indiana? Oh, yeah. 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 That show creeped me the fuck out. And not yeah. even the episodes, but like the opening titles were yeah. a hand past that milk carton and the kid, the missing kid on the milk carton disappeared. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wasn't that, didn't they do a. Didn't they do like a Tupperware episode? Yes. yes. And like the, the family the sold like, Tupperware. Yeah. And then yeah. at the end, you find they all like sleep in the Tupperware. Yeah, yeah. At the end, they like oh. un undid the Tupperware and they showed like the adult kid and then like the aged like mom, like grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, that shit. Oh, that shit was gnarly. That and I still, I still remember the first episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. Like I remember. I still, I remember that premiered, and I'm pretty sure it was a Sunday. Or, or maybe it was Saturday. Uh, it was Saturday know, night. It was Saturday it was night Snick. Snick. Yeah. So yeah. it was Saturday. And then right after that, I watched the replay of the X-Files season premiere, which I don't know if you guys remember, but that season premiere, like there's, there is an encounter and they're like, they're, they're like chasing this. It's an alien. You never see it great, but they're like chasing it through a warehouse, you know? And it's like, you're like, oh my God. And, and so like, I went from like a tiny me went from, are you afraid of the dark <laughs> to Mulder Scully chasing an alien through a warehouse, uh, watching it on this like 12 inch, uh, TV <laughs> at my grandparents' house when I was a kid. And then like, I just remember like when that being over and I like turned the light on in the room. Cause I was like, well, you know, the lights were off. Watch and I was just like, I was just like looking around and I was just like, Oh, the whole world is out to get me. There's aliens and monsters and ghosts and things in the mirror. And, um, you're and, like, and, grandma and, and grandpa like, aren't strong enough. They're not. Strong I, enough. Yeah. Right. I was like, <laughs> the power went out. In the I was like, I'm, a I'm a fat, closer. I'm a slow fat kid. My grandparents aren't fighting anybody. I was like, their dog is cute and loves everyone. Like, 
we're all dead. Like this is this alien's gonna get. You're all sleeping in Tupperware. Yeah. Or like, does it ever weird you out how similar your Saturday nights still are to that? Oh yeah. (laughs) Nothing's different. Like honestly, it's me in the dark watching TV uh, with my dead grandparents. What (laughs) not? I mean that that story is actually a lot spookier if they were dead the whole time. <laughs> I want to see what's in your closet now. <laughs> Basically, um, Blake, Blake's doing a live action remake of The Visit. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! I I watched that uh, I last year for like the first time. I, I was on like uh, was, I kept seeing it on like Halloween movie to watch lists, uh, and and I was like, I've never seen this, and I was like, oh my god, like. The that movie's the movie's messed up. It's so good. It's I good, but it's, it's 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 the the echoes of that in my mind are very much in juxtaposition of this of this gorgeous art on the screen right now. <laughs> like, I, I will say, just like before we get off the visit and go back to talking about real things, um, if you ever have the chance to watch the visit, watch it with the best sound quality you can possibly get, because I the first time I saw it, I was in a pretty shitty theater. And you could not hear what goes on in the diaper. You could not hear the oh, grandpa oh, shitting himself. Oh, and then I watched it with the wrong sound, and I was like, "Wow, it's like I'm right in there." Mm. Wow, so, you're right in the diaper. Yep. Right oh my there, God. just like that's that high <laughs> definition. That's that. That's that. That Dolby. That, yeah, that it's Dolby that, it's that, like, that like you never that, knew you uh, The eleven point one immersive. Yeah. <laughs> If, <laughs> if only they let out a scent too. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah it's, it's it's uh M Night Shyamalan mixed like Dune. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, he did let the spice flow. If you know what I mean. He did. Mm. He did. It flowed. Um, the spice flow. Yeah. <laughs> Now let's talk about this lovely kid-friendly. Yeah, look at this awesome sticker you can get. Um, I love Snowpaw because she's got the two colored eyes. Um, yeah. Like, but th- this 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 sticker is great. So if you guys if you guys back this and Mary Shelley again at the tier of physicality, right in the circle, you get it. Get in the circle of friendship on the tier of physicality, and then you can get these. I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to confuse you. If you back these <laughs> campaigns, you get free stuff. It's easy yeah. peasy. Uh, and, and not only that, like you get a ton of free digital stuff, uh, from, from Jess's campaign. And I think Rob does the same. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I got digital, yeah. I got physical. There's all, there's all kinds yeah. of babies. All kinds of bonuses. Thing. Yeah. yeah. They're, just, they're just giving comics away. If you, if you <laughs> just go give your, give some of your money away and then, uh, and then it's a wonderful exchange of you goods. You get a print, you get yeah. a sticker, you Everyone. get this, you get that. <laughs> and, and Mark McTell is the artist who illustrated this, and he had a lot of fun drawing Snowpaw. I think he had more fun drawing Snowpaw than Barg, and I will forgive him for it. But <laughs> it's because Barg doesn't have clothes. She's wearing a kilt. Yeah. I know, and I'm like, I need to have my character needs clothes. Like it's crazy, but <laughs> but I still like him. Barg is the Black Hound, though. He's more of like the from British mythology. Okay. He, yeah. So he's he's kind of a werewolf, but he's not. Exactly. Well, it was that was like the fun conversation I had with Carlos uh way yeah. back when we first were like developing the characters. Uh, he he tried drawing Nightwolf like completely naked with like a fur cloth across <laughs> the you know the the piece if you will. And I'm like, "No, dude, that's creepy. Just put pants yeah. on him." I'm like, "He's <laughs> shredding out of his clothes. Just put pants Just on." Just put some pants on. And him. Then, and then he's he had like, he still balls, draws him naked. And I'm like, "You know what? I'll live. Uh, that's all right." Well, I and, and speaking of that, I'll never forget my mom took me to into the woods when i was like 10 i don't even know 12 and we went to the potter center and we went to this theater and the wolf comes out on stage and they decided to make him fully anatomically correct and i was 12 oh. which meant my brother was 10 and which meant my sister was eight <laughs> <laughs> so we're all sitting there like um the whole time the wolf is just like Red rocket spark Red rocket. <laughs> I, know, I, was, I was thinking like Scooby Doo, like <laughs> so you think i would have learned but he made him nicely he didn't like put you know all the bits and pieces but hmm. still you know <laughs> that, that feels like something that would really imprint on a person it imprinted yeah. like pretty I, yeah i'm sure yeah that would have stuck with you for life yeah i think dog, the whole like, time oh. It was like such a cool production, but still, I was just like, "Wait, what just what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Why is this happening?" You know, I'm how, sure. Like, I'm sure it was always, more. Oh, I'm sorry, Richard. I like how kids always rename things. I like so yeah. in your mind, you're like, you know, the Wolf Dick Show. Yeah, the Wolf Dick Show. <laughs> and um, 
And so when I took my own kids, I was like, Rob's God. writing that down. Rob's like, that's the next Kickstarter. Not safe right for there. work. <laughs> I'm going to start a podcast called The Wolf, Wolf Dick Show. Now, Jessica, really important question. Every time you see the credit executor producer Dick Wolf, does it freak you out? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's his name. But yeah. Isn't that the guy from uh, Law and Order? Law and Order, it, But yeah. it doesn't give me – I don't go total flashback, but that's really funny. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that worked. No, that's kidding. funny because I, I, I have a similar experience to that too, but I went to – my cousin took me to a church play of like one of those plays where like everybody dies and you like see them go to hell kind of. And then, uh, and then at the end of it, I was like, brimstone stuff. Yeah. Like, and at the end of it, they were like, they're like, who wants to get saved so that you don't also (laughs) get dragged to hell. (laughs) Like like, all these people in the play. And I was like, I was like, I don't want that to happen, please. And they're like, Oh man. I remember like my, my cousin's grandma. I don't even know. So that's, so that's like nothing. That's just my cousin's grandma. Like it was like, so she like has me, hooks my arm like her arm is like in my armpit she's like dragging and i wasn't like fighting her she just was like holding me like walking me down this church aisle she's like i will drown you in holy water yeah she was like she was like you're not getting away boy and i was like oh my god Um, and so i was like she's like well and all these people like on the on the sides of the aisles like people like hallelujah praise and i was like i was like i don't like this and it was very weird and then there's like there's it was mostly kids right because there's like people brought like kids to this play to like remind you of like if you have sex and and do drugs and you know like go to hell and uh and so like i was like we get down there and and, and the the pastor guy like says a little prayer and then he gave us all these like workbooks that like you read the bible and fill out. i gave us homework at church it was like all the worst things all together and like i was just like i never i i very much on par with me i never finished filling out the book like i kind of gave up like halfway through and i was like i guess i'm going to hell I'm you know I, you got halfway through i probably would have been like looked at it once and be like nah yeah like, okay really? so you're new gonna stretch die. Goal. Yeah. New stretch goal. If we get to twenty thousand dollars on the campaigns tonight, we are saving Blake's soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Someone. we actually, us three, know how to do it. And, and at twenty five thousand, he'll sneak us into heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and on that note, uh, uh, Jessica's are coming up on five thousand, so we only need fifteen thousand more uh, to to save. My my innocent nerdy. Well, I guess it's not innocent if it needs saving to save my nerdy soul. Uh, we just need fifteen thousand um, dollars. Yeah. Or if 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 that's too much for you guys, another ten k and we get that trophy. I you know. So I, either way, whatever happens happens. But you know, back back this trophy campaign. Soul. Trophy yeah, trophy soul. soul. <laughs> What do you trophy? do? I don't know. Yeah. I feel like if you have a good enough trophy, heaven should let you in. They should. I <laughs> yeah, I should. Is that or like if I still had my grade school yearbooks and mm. I could like show St. Peter, like, okay, but like 25 people signed this on the last day of school, and he'd be like, All right, you're you're legit, you can go in. Like, because uh, that's that's how you really judge people. Is your I have a certificate that says that I'm allowed to ride my bike to school. Um that's <laughs> by Ronald McDonald. <laughs> so I'm probably good. I, oh I man! Know. I think you're going to get to the pearly gates, and they're going to give you this workbook. <laughs> right? That you yeah. Finished. But yeah, there's hey, going to be like a side room of all these other people. Yeah. with These workbooks. Really gonna, look at me remember this awesome. thing, guy? Like, <laughs> you need to still finish the paperwork. Get on it. And then I'm going to be dead, and Joel and Chrissy are still going to be sending me messages on Discord too. Like, hey, you, can you send this file to somebody? I'm like, no, guys, I'm dead, and I have to fill out this Jesus book now. <laughs> I can't respond to Discord messages anyway. No, <laughs> I mean you can message me. I probably know all the answers, like all the churches. So, yeah. How many Jesuses were there? <laughs> that's a, that's a trick question. Guys, like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck on question one. <laughs> is, what does the shamrock represent? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. uh, I still I used to have that uh, kids book about the three and one the trilogy mm-hmm. dude, that my, like from my that my grandma got me. I wish I still had that. It made it was so stupid. I mean, um, I'm a, I'm down with the Holy Ghost. I'm into whatever that is. I think I always liked <laughs> that part of the trilogy, the Trinity. I was like that Holy Ghost. What is what's the Holy Ghost? What's up his to? deal? Yeah. What's yeah. His... <laughs> Like, yeah, I get who the father is. I get who the son is. What's this Holy Ghost been? Yeah, what all this, of us? like random I'm burning I'm fire? Yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by that component. Okay, I before we all get canceled, that would be so funny the... if you did that for your like monster of the week. Yeah, like, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the 
<laughs> that would go over great, I'm sure, with the internet as a whole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what if it's just like the holier than thou ghost? Like it's one ghost oh, no, who's like, like trying to get into heaven too late. And then, <laughs> like, they are they are a born again Christian ghost. Oh, Nicole no. says we'll let you in first, but you have to fill out this customer survey. Yes, we definitely have to do the survey. <laughs> there totally would be one too. Oh my god, that's the difference between heaven and hell. Heaven, you have to fill out the survey, but it's done eventually, and then you get to go in. Hell, it's no. just a never-ending survey. It's like every page, there's more pages. No, you finish and you try to submit, and the little wheel just goes. Like oh, it this. just spins, <laughs> and then it's like, did. please and resubmit. It starts over. <laughs> please resubmit. <laughs> Please, yeah. There, sure. there was a syntax error. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like so my my, uh, my dad was on the phone the other day and and he's screaming at the phone and and he's it's a robot it's not a real person and he's like <laughs> he's like I don't want it no I don't want it and he's like I don't want it and he's like shaking so mad my dad's hard of hearing right and he's yelling into the phone and so we're like like dad dad my my sister's like dad dad my mom's like jam jam like, everybody's yelling at him he can't hear shit finally like he like gets done yelling you know to, to, to nobody we're like it's not a real person and he's like what he's like, it's not a real person it's a <laughs> robot hang up the phone <laughs> like so now that's that's like our new family joke now anytime something happens or if like if like someone's having a bad day it's just like i don't want it and, we like start yelling. and my dad's like i hate all of you um dad yelling at a robot again yeah, yeah. yeah dad's yelling at those robots um uh, anyways uh i don't i don't know how to segue from fathers and robots into werewolves and mary shelley's but that's what we're gonna do uh because we got to talk about this the, the 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 connecting tissue uh to these other campaigns we mentioned tonight is jessica's mary shelley school for monsters origins 2 i don't know if you all can see this but it starts off very like this this cover image and and it's not just an image there's a, there's a whole moment and scene uh it's it's a little scary a little creep like this is a this is a real snapping jaws angry at you werewolf right this ain't this ain't like a frank and shell coming in can i pet that dog like no like <laughs> dog does not want to be pet right now okay and, yeah. and like it's it's very intense um jess I, I remember you showed me uh the covers when mm -hmm. you when you first got a couple different versions of the cover and one of them like was like a very scenic like lovely like image of like a voyage and it felt like very like calm and serene and then the other yeah. one was just like snapping jaw werewolf coming at frank like rah, 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 rah. and you know and i was like i was like whoa and jess was like what do you think of these two covers and i was like both of them do two wildly different you know <laughs> yeah. one, one is like oh this is gonna be a nice chill adventure with shell and the monster crew right and then the other one is like is frank gonna die i don't know and like it was very intense and 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 you kind of went with that. You were like, no, like it's, it gets kind of intense in this issue. And I, I, I want that. And it, yeah. it's, it's such a good, it, oh my God. I, I, I love, I love how you, I love all these characters so much and I would like well, live and die for them. And I kind of <laughs> well, love you. how you put them through the ringer though. Like, it's <laughs> well, and yeah. And for people who don't know, like, you know, Mar shell, the main character is um, a supernatural version of Mary Shelley. Yeah. Shelley. And one, when, when she, um, tried to rescue the Necronomicon, the evil book of the dead from this evil mad scientist, Dr. M. Like she touched the book, it cast a spell. I mean, cause the spell, the book is actually cute and cuddly. His name is Necro and she's very uh, powerful, but still like kind of more like a puppy. And mm -hmm. she tries to rescue it. When she touches it, it splits her into two versions of herself. One that goes on to write Mary Shelley and the one that we know about, and then the supernatural version. And so in the first book, they have to rescue La Llorona and so they go through a whole adventure. But in the first Origins comic, that that's the story that you tell in the first, that I tell in the first Origins comic is how they came to be, how this evil Dr. M and he holds them captive and he does all these experiments on them. So in the second Origins 2, uh, this one, they escape, they've escaped. Um, and now they're on two different missions. One is Frank has gone to the Arctic and it's kind of a wink to the old Frankenstein who's read Frankenstein they are there's an arctic um yeah. uh, trip and you know they are this voyage is going out and there's this letter writing campaign between uh sister and brother i believe and um sorry my the, the santa annas are so bad out here so my eyes are just like mm. um so basically um uh frank has 
is basically doing the monster journey from Frankenstein, except for different reasons. So in Frankenstein, it's like a, ven a vengeance trip, right, um, out there. And in my story, that's what it feels like. Frank is out to find Barg, this um, the Black Hound, because Barg worked with Dr. M and helped hold them captive all those years and kept them in captivity longer than they would have if he would have helped them. Um, so you kind of go out on this voyage with Frank not knowing like, is Frank going to kill Barg? Um, is Barg going to kill Frank? Um, they're going to have this epic showdown. Um, what is the true intentions there? And so it kind of sets up the whole idea because Origins 2 and then the larger hardcover that's coming in October is all about grudges, forgiving, vengeance. Like, who does it hurt? Who does it not mm -hmm. hurt? Um, what are the best ways to deal with it? And so we, and you know, so that we go to the Arctic first, but then we quickly go to Japan and we're going to um, discover... Uh, Tamamo no Mei, who's the legendary yokai, um, the kitsune, um, nine-tail fox. And she is another monster from their past who worked with Dr. M at times. And so Shell is in Japan and Frank is in the Arctic. And then they reconnect in Origins to kind of deal with Dr. M or try to deal with Dr. M. But they've got to get the kitsune to work with them. And so it is dealing with these past... Um, and tell I'm the writer because I'm going to ramble on about the story. <laughs> but um, And so Anna and I have just been having a lot of fun. We do it all on email. So that's interesting. But, um, you know, she just is enjoying creating all these new monsters so much. And I'm enjoying writing them. And a lot of what I do with the reason I've chosen monsters and the reason that um, I chose Mary Shelley in particular was I wanted to deal with kind of this concept of who we throw out in society, who we other, who are the people that when we read these myth myths and these folk tales, like who are the characters who get demonized the most or un irrationally punished, you know, and mm -hmm. they're typically a lot of times female characters. So I'm dealing with a lot of, of that. And on in every comic, even though it's like a fun Scooby-Doo kind of adventure, they're unpacking this trauma that they have from their past, that some really dark things have happened and also the trauma that the monster that they're dealing with has. So it's a little bit of that. You have a really good balance in, in your narratives. Cause it's like you, you so like if, 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 if some of you, if you're not familiar with, with Jessica change that right now, um, but like follow her and everywhere and, and check out wicked tree press. But like, Jessica goes to like, does like a lot of library work, does a lot of work with like, with, with schools and youths and like promotes reading and, and creating and writing and goes around and, and like, and like workshops with, with, with kids in the areas. It's, uh, it's, it's very cool. But you know, when you're, when you're telling these stories, you are able to, to like, it's almost like a fable, right? Cause you're, 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 mm -hmm. you're teaching, you're giving them a lesson. Uh, and as you've mentioned several times, um, in, in previous interviews and, and, and a little bit tonight, but you know, you, you're very much like using this narrative as a way is like a, 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 like a, an introspective narrative, right? Cause it's like, mm -hmm. you know, who are the, the real mom, you know, like, like you mentioned, like you've said in the past, like, you know, it's the, those people with the torches and the pitchforks yeah, going after the monsters. Those are usually the monsters. Right. And, and so it's like, this notion of like, you know, don't, don't judge a book by its cover, like get, to, mm -hmm. you know, get to know someone before you demonize them. Uh, and then as you know, mentioned here, like grudges and, and vendettas and, re you know, I'm, we're not going to get into like hardcore revenge narratives here, right? Like it's not <laughs> I mean, like, it's not it's it, gets, it gets a little <laughs> hardcore, but not like, <laughs> but, but you but, know, middle grade hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, you know, you're, you still like work yeah. in, um, you know, how to deal with these intense emotions, but it, it's, it's very organic. It's not overbearing. It's, it's very natural to the narrative and stuff. And it's, and uh, that's the tricky, uh, that's very tricky to, to, to pull off, you know, cause it's, you can, no, cause so I can easy. be overbearing. I can really <laughs> be heavy handed sometimes. No, no, it's a hard balance. Cause I write speculative sci-fi short stories too. And okay. I, I, I write really dark political stuff you know, on my adult side and, and, in yeah, it is kind of, that's, what's been so fun about doing middle grade and where I, and YA in general, is you can be a little, you know, more of more of a fable, you know, come mm. at it in a different kind of way, which is, yeah, it is hard not to be heavy handed if you're trying to say something. So you gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, like yeah. I said, you, 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 you tread like carefully, but it's like, I, I, I feel like that's like, is that it, when you're like editing 
or laying out a scene or thinking about dialogue or it's still like, is that, do you, I mean, you obviously don't struggle with it because you, you pull it off. Right. But oh, is no, it, I do struggle. Get there? Like, is it, yeah. okay. I mean, I've struggled in other projects. I have an easier time in this project for some reason. I think it, this one feels real natural to me, but, um, the a lot Wait, of this this origins too or just mary shelley's mary world shelley's world building. feels very natural okay. for me yeah it always has like when i came up with the idea i i wanted like just why i wanted to write something in sherlock watson for a long time i always have wanted to write something in the mary shelley world but i didn't want to just do a frankenstein story mm. i wanted to do something that was definitely inspired by her and it just when it finally came to me and i started doing it it just it, you know, like as writers, every it sometimes there's a story that just a world that just pulls you in and is easier to write in than some of the other worlds that you've written. Like some some things are more work than others. You know, not mm. that this isn't work because it is, but it's um. And I think and I think always working with an artist and being really open to the messages that they send you, whether they're verbal or just through art, um, I think really enhances the story and the editing process for me. Like you know, when Anna sends pages back and they're maybe not exactly as I wrote them, which I don't ever expect. Um, it's like, that's part of the process. You know, I'm like, oh yeah. And then, you know, I change dialogue and change the way things are. And um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what you asked anymore. I just scrambled. <laughs> no, you're, 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 I was like, it is you like you, 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 it's, it's something that you, you're cognizant about that you, you know, in on the editing floor and the right, you know, and you're, and working with Anna and stuff, it's just it's something you have to deal with. I, I the way you both, I, I'm really glad that that Anna has that you guys have found the time because you know I feel like especially on Kickstarter, sometimes yeah. you guys find that great artist, right? And then and then you come out and then the campaign does well and it gets a lot of eyes on it. Guess what happens? People start hiring that artist, right? And and then sure, sometimes they time. get busy, yeah. you know. And then but you you guys have found a way to stay in tune with each other's schedules uh yeah pretty pretty well like you, you guys are you guys are cranking out the goods like you know e efficiently and they, like she, she sends you pages and the, the projects have been coming and like production is is going and yeah i just she's I, pretty she's like a stealth bomber though like she's always got these <laughs> other projects going and then they drop and i'm like oh and i worked on <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> not, but that's probably just from the nature of living in different countries you know and then mm. and i'll be at the i'll be at a con and i'll I'll, she'll have sent me some pages from a book she did and I'll see it and I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy it. And then, you know, it's just, it's just funny because I haven't, I thought I'd seen all her work and then everyone, it just keeps popping on. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But anyways, yeah. and this is it's the metal, so what, what you've got up right now is the illustration she did for, um, this is the sea voyage one he was talking about where he, this was the first sketch I showed you Blake yeah. way back then. And this is the metal print. So we usually do a metal print for every campaign and we do 25 to 50 prints of it. We're just doing 25 of this one. And um, they're really pretty. They print on silver and it, and she just sent me this and I'm like, Oh, it's gotta be a metal print. So there's a tear for that. If you, you know. did one, you did one for the hardcover too, right? Yep. For the, it was like that, the book plate image you made. Yep. In, that one. And then I did metal. one. I did one for Origins One Two, which was a Dungeons and Dragons game that the whole crew was playing, nice. and Necro was the DM. So yeah, I would. Oh, I, I didn't do them. I didn't do them. I sent the ideas, and she did. Them. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like for sure. Yeah. I want to play D and D so bad. Uh, I, I can't find anyone to play with me. My sister and brother in law even started playing, and I was like, mm. you know, I really want to play, and they were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you knew when his birthday was, Blake. Yeah, oh, that is true. Wow. Oh, I'm oh, I'm gonna wow. clip this. I'm clipping that and showing them. Uh, everybody was making. Everybody was giving me shit. They they went to brunch for his birthday, and they were like, "Oh, we're going to brunch for Kyle's birthday and stuff." And I was like, "Happy birthday, bro!" Yeah, it's the last time I ever wish my brother-in-law happy birthday again. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Learn my. See, this is this is my secret on Facebook. I never wish anyone a happy birthday. I wait until I see someone else's wish them a happy birthday, and I just comment seconded. Oh, <laughs> show support. It's non-committal. If I, I always like, like enough, the... I'll do it with a with a full stop. If I don't, I'll do it on my phone with autofill. <laughs> <laughs> I always like the ones that when people wait till like the next day, and they're like, they're like, oh, thanks, thanks for all the birthday wishes. You really made me feel special. And then I'm like, I was that asshole who didn't say anything. And then and then so then you got to like leave a happy birthday in that com that like shame comment, shame comment yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they never know just write you're welcome that's what yeah. i do yeah. oh shit that's a good idea also yeah. uh someone's birthday is the best day to unfriend them because there's so much other shit going on they will not notice 
<laughs> I've never, I've never, I've never strategically thought unless about everybody that. unfriends them on that day, right? Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> we're gonna do that too. Screw Blake and his birthday, like <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I sometimes think I should have I should I, I should have been born as like a high school bully in the in the social media <laughs> age because like I have oh. a mind for it you know. Your talent, talent for That's, it. I want I bully. want that comic Richard of the uh, the, the the only thing I want I in life is to stuff. die and come back as a high school bully like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add it to the list. Uh, <laughs> it's. Oh goodness, um, but but yeah, as as I mentioned earlier. Um, High school bullies aside, uh, that's the, there's um, Jess is giving away awesome stuff like uh, based on like weeks, uh, the like week and, and backer tiers, uh, and 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 how you pledge, uh, like this, the the uh, uh, Phil uh, Phil's Haunting, which is a, a such a good, such a good book. Uh, Phil Falco, I couldn't think of his last and name, Anna's an artist on, is an artist on this as well, the yeah, haunting. yeah. Um, that's that's a that's a, a great book, and then um. Let's see that the, uh, almost all the all the week one backers got the loose for licorice, which is a, right. a, another great another great book. Um, and now uh, we're getting some. Uh, you're going like, well, yeah, very this is much. This is a, an adult, or it's not adult adult, but it's this is a this is a scary book. Well, yeah, because I mean, I think my I think people who back my campaign like horror, mm. and whether I mean I personally like horror all the way from kid horror to very i mean yeah. i don't like body horror that much but mostly okay. i like all horror um and i really liked the hospice concept that the guys did on kickstarter it was there cool was deal. six yeah. of them and they all like launched these kickstarters that all were a part of this story and travis 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 i'm gonna be in a travis invited me to be in an anthology so i'm gonna do a horror anthology with him which is kind of exciting because i haven't nice. worked with him before and i asked him if i could use this for week two because i wanted it to be a darker a more adult horror i usually just do one or two comics for the weekly because i like to showcase them it's like just some kind of mm -hmm. weird thing i do but um and then also just a side note i'm snowpaw which i'm going to announce tomorrow number one is our 200 backer um bonus and i just have to put it up um because we're at 180 now so you, if you we get to our 200 level, you get the Snowpaw one um, digital. Thank you, yeah. Rob. That's right. So, You're welcome, man. And we're and we're over here like back Rob's Rob. campaign. Yeah. Also, we're gonna give Rob's comic. Well, no, but they got it. Yeah, yeah, they're well, getting Origins one from me as well. Yeah. And, and, uh, oh, so, okay. Mouth, so it's like it's, you get the little mixture. Uh, yeah, I get a taste. Get a little taste. You know, the... that's how I found out about Stephen Prince's Monster Matador was back in a. Uh, I can't remember whose campaign it was. It might have been one of one of Travis Gibbs campaigns, but like. I yeah. got like a big digital bundle of like all, you know, people donating stuff mm -hmm. and, and like stumbled across a lot of cool books. Like, and I was like, wow, this is a cool, this is a cool thing. So like, yeah if, yeah, if if you're out there and you're, you know, don't ignore the digital goodies you get in these I, campaigns. I, I now the trick is everybody used it. everybody's book. So now it's like, Oh, what, who's, we need to come up with new books. Yeah. Like, yeah you have to be careful that, um, that Steven is the example you use for this. Because like literally just the other day, I was having an argument with Stephen Prince about whether or not like I, I firmly believe that the digital bundle shit is like it is it, it, no no one reads them. The bonus of it is that like everyone who's in the bundle will then share your campaign, so you're getting that publicity. Uh -huh. Right? Then I've I've always been like, look, it's valid, do it. But like, do not fool yourself into thinking anyone has ever opened or even downloaded those PDFs. That has never happened once. <laughs> I actually, I actually this and like I can we can do a digital bundle where all it is is a picture of my actual butthole and no one will notice. I've so had people and I disagree because I've had yeah, people same. email me because I messed up, like I put the cover instead of the PDF, and they're like, I can't not many, but I can't open this. Is anyone else having trouble doing this? Oh, <laughs> like, wow. that's like, when, I, when I put the picture of my actual butthole, no one yeah. said they couldn't open it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> oh uh, <laughs> But yeah, I've in because I do surveys after every campaign, and I I try to actually get away from doing a lot of because like again do at this point everybody has shared everybody's book right, mm -hmm. so I'm like trying to come up with different things to do, but they're like yeah we love the digitals and I'm like oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I liked, I don't, I don't, I get overwhelmed by the giant digital bundle. Like when someone has like 30, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's insane. Yeah. yeah. I like my approach is the way I do it is I like to do one to three 
And so I can one showcase the person that is doing it and tag them. And like that helps both of us, I think a little bit, yeah. but also like you're giving this thing to people and it feels it like it has real value, not just yeah. like, and then I like the way Rob does it as well. Um, Cause you do it in those on, you have that square and you just unlock yeah. them. And yeah. then Unlocking that's, milestones, yeah. Yeah. I like them. And I knew Richard didn't do them, so I didn't ask him, but I normally would have asked you. <laughs> now, now I feel like I should. Now I feel like I got to go to Steven and say, listen, Steven, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> was, first of all, do not tell Stephen he was right. That yeah, is like, don't. <laughs> yeah, he's, you're, he's watching you're, uh, right now, going like this. Hey, he probably is. Yeah, he's my, like, my two he's big like, bugbears right. with, with all of Kickstarter is I hate, I hate. I've never read a digital comic in my life. I'm never going to. It's yeah. just not going to happen. I'll buy physical things if I buy a digital comic. What that means is I want to support you. I'm not going to read it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing is bookmarks. I am so anti bookmark. Yeah. The idea that, like, okay, look, if you're doing- I have bookmarks and I have anti-bookmarks. <laughs> if you're doing a big book, if you're doing a book that is more than 50 pages, fine. Yes. Have a fucking bookmark. Well, not for if you are doing yeah. single issues and giving away bookmarks, you have no respect for your readers. I never really? thought about that. That makes no sense. If somebody, yeah, and then I got, I, I, I've been like- That makes no sense. So oh long. my God. And then I, I, back, I back long. this campaign and I get this, like, the package and it, it comes with, like- this little envelope and I open it up like a fucking Wonka's golden ticket and inside it is a gold plated bookmark. And I have been like one of the people selected to get this thing. There's only 10 of them made and it's so special. And I looked at it and I threw it straight in the trash because fuck bookmarks. <laughs> I actually love bookmarks, but I just, I, I'm now going to make a bookmark that just says fuck bookmarks with your name yeah. under it. And that's I'm just make, like, so, like, it's a small piece of cardboard that explains to you that it's probably 22 fucking pages and it has pictures to help you remember where you were up to. <laughs> the thumbnails it has the little thumbnails <laughs> oh, you're, <laughs> you're here you can circle where you left off god <laughs> fucking bookmarks and digital bundles and now being pro proven wrong on both no i don't think you're wrong about book i think bookmarks are one of those things that like everyone wants them like we because we're at festival of the books like we always have like three book because i share a table like a mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. with three people and there'll be four people this year and it's like we all have our own bookmark and I've just been trying to get rid of all my bookmarks because I ordered a giant amount when I first did my series. And finally I'm almost at the end guys. Aren't you happy for me? You should be happy for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done really well. And yeah, I got rid of all those bookmarks and, um, and now we're just like, okay, we just need, if we're going to have a bookmark, we just have to make one that has a link to everyone because everyone's going to throw these bookmarks away anyway, mm. but everyone wants to take something when they stop in I'm like, well, we should just pressure them to buy something because they just want to, you know, but they still want to take it. So it is a hard, it, the bookmark's a hard thing. What you want to do, uh, this is like, this and I do work. like them in theory, but yeah. This doesn't work if you only have uh, like an artist alley table, but if you're at something with a booth, yeah. um, get something that people can physically interact with. Yeah. Um, when I was b back in my days of living in New Zealand and what I call the serving time portion of my life, uh, I had a like a prize wheel that people could spin. 50 cents, you get to spin the prize wheel. You're guaranteed to win a piece of candy. So it's not gambling. But if you get, like, there's a one in 36 chance that you'll win a $2 comic. Yeah. And people, and I, what I would do is, like, for the 50 cents, you get a piece of candy and a card that had a link to Blastosaurus's Tinder profile. Um, <laughs> and, like, that worked like crazy because people felt like they paid for it. So they valued the card as an object as opposed mm. to a free thing, which they'll just throw away. Yeah, they'll just throw it away. I'm going to steal your idea. Yeah, yeah that is a good idea. Because we I, have a we we do have a wheel that sometimes we use, but I, I get tired of it halfway through the experience. Because yeah, I just heard about that the other day. You're not supposed to, or like cons, like they'll get mad at you for like giving out. They don't like people to give out stickers because they usually get yeah. tossed on the floor or the or, or the the, the back or the little pet, bat back part gets thrown on the floor right when yeah. they use the sticker or whatever. So. Well, what's nice though about like uh, so I every die cut that I have in my campaigns I that I give to the backers I usually sell for like two bucks at a con mm -hmm. and I make sure that it has the logo right on it so like they know what those characters are from so like if anybody plasters that somewhere they're carrying or carrying it around it has the logo of what it is mm -hmm. and so, like just to kind of help with that brand recognition yeah <laughs> This is the big mistake I made. I got door hangers made that say on one for Haunted Hill. And on one side, it says, uh, keep out on reading dirty comics. And on the other <laughs> side, it says, uh, come in. I'm probably just masturbating. And um, the like, I, I when I got them, I was like, 
there's nothing on this. Like, there's a picture of my character, but there's nothing on this for people to, like, know who I am, what I do, where to find my stuff. I need to yeah. get those made again and then put them on every single hotel room at Comic-Con. Yes. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Just, that's that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> is, Viral marketing. Is, yeah, why not? If you, I mean, I, that's... Well, you got to go through, you got to go and buy every sounds, door. That sounds hotel. expensive, though, too. Like, I, I, I recently found out what, like a stack of colored postcards cost. And I was like, whoa, like that's, that's the wonder of Kickstarter. Like you set this thing. So everyone is like buying them on Kickstarter and then you get 2000 of them made. Oh, and then you get more than you have to. Okay. Yeah. 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 I did like my, my best thing seriously was uh, I set up Blastosaurus with a Tinder profile and um, Mm -hmm. had it uh, on the, like every convention, I would print a huge poster of his like profile picture and his Tinder details, whatever and have it up at the booth. And then I would pay for like the top tier level you could get for that weekend and super like as many people as I could within like a one mile radius. And so then everyone would get this notification of, hey, a 72 year old dinosaur wants to fuck you. And then they'd see <laughs> me at the con and be like, oh wait, that's that dinosaur that wants to fuck me. Let me talk to you about this thing. <laughs> Something I've been thinking about marketing all wrong. Uh, Richard, you Richard gotta get a to- fuckable dinosaur. I yeah, I guess something. They say sex sells, right? Everything's better when it's fuckable, right? Like it, I'm it, not dressing up as a fuckable dinosaur. I, I, I super will, dangerous, I, and I, I got I um, I, I got a lot of back in the old days. I got given like not a lot, occasional pieces of fan fiction about Lassosaurus were written, uh, and some of it like obviously some of it pornographic, but a shocking amount was about me and my dinosaur. And I have never been happier than when I read this piece that just said, like, it was like, I'm going to get the wording wrong, but it was like, uh, Richard looked up at, at <laughs> Richard looked up at his, at his big green friend and quietly whispered, so how do you want to do this? Lathosaurus put a gentle hand on Richard's shoulder, looked him, <laughs> looked at, looked at him in his funny eyes and said, well, I'm not a Triceratops. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> So, for the for the record, if Blastosaurus existed, he'd fuck me. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Weird that that all age series doesn't continue. Yeah, <laughs> they don't want to keep making it. <laughs> the continuation of your guys's love affair. <laughs> Although I would probably buy it because they do have those dirty kid books everywhere, all over. You know what? I don't. I would read it on the floor of the of the convention. <laughs> They say, hmm. They have dirty. Where, where are you going, Jessica, that they have dirty kids' books everywhere? Okay. First What's of all, that new horror book? What I, that, what I just meant that there's always someone at a convention who does like the, you know, ever, ever since they did that, like, go the fuck to sleep or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. All, right, all right. So then, different. So there's always a booth somewhere that is yeah. like doing some version of that. And okay. they take it a little bit further. Stay in your that, room, kid, mom and yeah, dad. Stay, yeah, that kind of stuff. Oh, there's like there's that diehard Christmas story that's uh, that's yeah. set up like a children's book, but it's it's yeah. die it's a retelling of Die Hard. Um, yeah, kind of like but it's that, drawn but... with like children's like it looks like it looks like a children's book. With, like... I had to clarify where I was going so <laughs> yeah. people knew what was going on. It was, uh, <laughs> Dwellings. Dwellings was a Kickstarter book that mm-hmm. now is published through Oni, but it's very it's it's very much like peanut style animation but like really dark and twisted horror stories mm. but like that kind of like cutesy cell shaded image it's it's it works like it really does work it's it's interesting um yeah they, they just like get yeah. mo- murdered and eaten by monsters and it's uh it's 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 very it's very uh, you know like it's uh, uh you know and uh it's not for kids but it looks yeah. like it's for so like a kid could find it and be like oh neat and then get traumatized right like, it's just like i have a couple of those like i have the velveteen zombies uh, oh, okay <laughs> like or the pat no it's the pat bunny you know the, the pat bunny baby book but it's a zombie one and oh like, yeah i have a couple of those that i thought were funny back in the day so they're still up hanging that's and that's you that, know no Eno's an interesting character because he's not it, he's only in the origins like for just a little bit he's traveling mm-hmm. with um frank in the arctic to find barg but um he makes a big he is a bigger part of the hardcover that's coming you oh, know? Nice. so yeah and he has more but he's he's a firefox which is um kind of a norwegian um 
uh, folklore oh, where he can light a up. subpar internet browser. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I know I try to, I want to become more famous than the old internet browser. <laughs> you can do it. I think it's, I think Google it's, Google search, uh, yeah, Firefox, it's manageable. It'll pop up. Yeah. I just want to beat out the Firefox server. It's my goal. So. And, and, and by the way, not only do you have this campaign live right now, but the, this is your sub stack. You do weekly monsters on like you do these, mm -hmm. you do sub stack write-ups. Uh, you do a lot yeah. of cool monster stuff uh, with graphics like these explanations of their origins. It, it's, it's a cool, it's, it's a cool uh an occasion and everyone and usually once a month i actually write a uh, folk tale like i basically take the folklore and write a made-up folk tale about the creature or mm. a made-up short story about the creature because i why not ai is going to do whatever it wants so <laughs> like but it's part of like the stories like because i like fight, think folklore is so interesting and in how it started out you know orally and then it's just mm -hmm. storytelling and so i'm just always wanted to add to it so a lot of it if i really like one of the uh, creatures I'll add a new folk tale to go with their story. Cool. I really and, like the final line on that of just can wipe out a universe. I would like that on <laughs> uh, just wipe. t shirts and underwear and socks. I know, right? <laughs> He's just so innocent. And then I'm like, can wipe out a universe. Has <laughs> you done need it. That, um, has done it once. What's maybe that, twice. <laughs> that little fish that you that you keep in a bathroom with like the, the gaping beta? mouth, the little fish statue? Oh you, you need like don't you have one? You like? No, it was it's like, out in his court courtyard. Somewhere. Oh, it's in your courtyard. Oh, oh, yeah. you, oh, you're actually okay. Her, her name. Is I was lost. I thought it was a folk tale too. Her name is Busy Fishlips. Um, she is in the fountain outside my office, uh, and I once witnessed someone fucking her. Okay, that's which that's is not in my comic at all. No, that's Why not in. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, but now it might go in my monster of the week. <laughs> I will. I, I've got so much. I've been. I've now. So. Uh, the new place I, I just moved into is north of my office, so I have to walk past Busy every day um, a lot more often. So I'm taking a lot more pictures with her, and I've been taking a lot more weird angles. Mm. Uh, and I just learned today that the the only – like, this, this whole complex is basically empty since COVID. Um, but the admin office is right by, by, right by her. And it turns out that, like, they're all really curious as to why this weirdo keeps stopping and, like, climbing into the fountain and posing with this fucking fish. So, good. Anyways, I was thinking to say you should make a little sign to hang on a fish that says, can, what was it? What can was wipe out a universe? Can wipe out a universe. universe. Yeah. You maybe maybe I'll it. put a little like just like pieces of paper inside her mouth. I've told my husband that if I die before him, um, I want my ashes spread uh, inside busy fish lips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta. I mean, really. I, it's cute. It shouldn't be cute, but it's kind of cute. It is kind of cute. It's kind of <laughs> like romantic and intimate. Um, by the way, uh, Nightingale loves comics. Thank you so much for for tuning in. Uh, happy happy to have you uh, on in the audience. We we appreciate you. Uh, we'd appreciate you even more if you go to these three Kickstarter campaigns. No, I'm just kidding. We appreciate you. But if you did want to back these campaigns. I only appreciate people who back me. Yeah, that is true. He does. Um, he, he does. You can buy Richard's I, love. I appreciate anyone who makes it this far into a live stream. I'm always <laughs> surprised. Um, Jessica, this is a short live stream. Je Blake, how long did we go from our first time? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm fine. I, I'm not complaining. I'm the, just yeah, the, the, well, and then you did even the... We the did, other night when you did wine and comics, like you guys were talking for like two hours, and then and then I came on. Well, that was night. months ago. That, yeah. was, that was that was but that was because I think I did I did four hours with you, so I did four hours and fifteen minutes with them. Yeah, Jeez. and 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 Dave was like, "I'm not doing that ever again." I was like, yeah. it, it, it's it's you don't realize like how he just showed up to say yup." <laughs> my my <laughs> oh. <laughs> My first Kickstarter uh, when I did Octopus, like the beginning of last year, I keep losing my mouse. Like, I I um I lined up like seven interviews for that first day, and like oh I had really thought about it, be like, oh, they're easy, like an hour each. And of course, it's this book that's like incredibly like personal and revealing. It's a memoir comic about yeah. some of the worst times of my life, and I have to like happily talk about it in this like great detail over and over. And by the end oh, of the day, I was like, huh, I kind of wish I was dead right now. This yeah. is. This is interesting. And like the last, the last podcast of the night I was on, uh, I was Travis Gibbs, uh, creator hangout thing. Mm -hmm. And it was the one where, uh, you, 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 you can't leave until you get the number of backers oh, yeah. that he's going to get for you. <clears throat> Were we I, on actually, that one? I think that's where I met you. I was on that one that night. Was it was, that was the one I've, I've been on it twice. Been on um, it twice. and that, that first one, Travis did this thing where he said like, 
he I think he was being nice to me, but I think it made me look like a fucking asshole. It was very much like teacher's pet because he said he said everyone is going to get two backers, two new backers and like $30. And then he said, Richard, you're getting four backers and $100. And I did and it was okay, but I felt like I was the enemy of the room. <laughs> and then I felt like because and it, it happened, I got I got them fast because it was my first day. I was still getting like random other. Backers. Oh yeah, okay. It didn't really matter. Um, but then I felt like I had to stay, and there were some people who weren't getting any backers. Um, and the thing ended up going until like midnight. So for Travis, three a.m. and I stayed the entire time. And then Travis was like. Oh, Richard, can you hang out afterwards? And then I ended up talking to him until 4 a.m. my time about some other stuff that was I was like, I just I just need to be dead. I need to be How dead. in the world? That is so Yep. Well, I gotta yeah. take that off because I just I um that's so yeah. like I can't I did Travis's show and I did like it, but that was a lot of pressure. Yep. Yeah, I was like, I hope I get my backers, and then I don't know what's going to happen. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had no, I, I didn't know that's how it would happen. So I was like, wait, what? We're yelling at he's people. He's usually pretty good about getting it, though. No, he's good. Maybe but, he no, it, it works, and it, it's good for the creators and everything. It, it was just, yeah. it, it just, I wasn't prepared for the, uh, the late. Because yeah. it, it started at like started at seven my time and ended at four my time. Yeah, that is that is nine hours. Yeah, that's that's, that's long. Long. Yeah. nope. I would have fell asleep. Uh, and not not like because I me I just like that's a lot that's a long time to keep talking. Um, Travis I, and I have a thing like on his show. He knows at eleven thirty my wife will come in and she will basically tell me to shut the shit down. So <laughs> you can go as fast as you can. <laughs> oh, Rob, I'm stealing that. I'm like, it sounds worse if it's yeah. my husband doing it, but I'm gonna like. Hang on, <laughs> let me just make a note of this. Get what wife. <laughs> okay, <laughs> get wife. Yeah. Yeah. No, you got you got so you got the fish. I, I have a husband as well. I know. I was joking. You can use the fish wife and the yeah. husband. That I was love my name. fish wife. By the way, her name is Busy Fish Lips because uh, for the first couple of years that I lived around here, I kept uh, seeing Busy Phillips because she lives mm. around the corner from here. Um, and I was like, I really like that I'm seeing Busy Phillips and 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 like my my fish and Busy were the two people I like casually would walk past the most often. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was sitting at my favorite Thai restaurant with my friend David um uh shout out to david goran and he's he says to me he says oh do you want to hear this hear a joke and i said sure and he goes uh what do you call a blonde twink's asshole and i said what he said bussy phillips and busy phillips was sitting one table over and behind him and so he hadn't seen her and she just looked at me like like so <laughs> horrified and i saw her like mouth do that i was like you look like my fish i'm naming my fish busy fish lips so oh my god that's how that happened <laughs> My life is so boring. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you got to move to Los Angeles. It'll I be guess crazy. that's where. Yeah, yeah that's where. Yeah. That's where all the all the crazy stuff. I want to be clear. I live in the worst part. Like, like it's it's Hollywood. It's dirty. He lives in the dirty part. There are many nice places where this shit doesn't happen, but I will never leave here. I'm not sure there's that many places anymore that. that I oh, I found out this afternoon. Someone's filming porn in the place in the apartment right above mine. Oh my goodness. So I just went, oh my goodness. <laughs> so I love when we're talking about porn and then my Kickstarter is just going. Yeah. To segue back to, you know, giving back to the you community. You got to give back um, to the porn community. We, I, I've thought that this was very good. Like, Jessica always does this. Uh, as I mentioned, she does like, she does a lot of work with like libraries and, and, and youths and, and stuff. And, and, so you can there's a, there's actually two tiers you can do, um, you see so you can get one comic and give five, um, and then these get did these get donated to libraries? Well, uh, and yeah, and the reason they're the price that they are is I usually go and do a workshop and then hand them out. So it's okay. not just I should probably explain that in the tier, but um, it's usually when I go and do something and then it allows me to give everyone something for free oh nice and then so that's usually so usually it's attached to that i don't just drop them off i okay. work with the kids and then you know so so that's need what to talk about because i have that kids book that i just published recently and now i have oh, cool. like over two thousand copies that i need to get rid of <laughs> oh yeah like, yeah actually like jessica same exact deal i have my the the 
feminist retelling of Pierre that got me fired from my kid's publisher. I have about <laughs> 600 copies. What? Why did it get you fired? I haven't read that. Oh. I've read almost everything. You'd, I don't like. Don't know what that one is. Uh, okay. It was the, the last the last picture book I did, Sweet Penny and the Lion. Oh, okay. It's about a little girl who's so well behaved that she gets eaten by a lion mm. um, <laughs> and has to like stand up for herself and kick her way out. Uh, so the That's publisher, cute. like, basically when when they agreed, I was their highest selling author, and they're like, do whatever you want. And I signed this contract with them for this book, and then the editor suddenly was gone. And then they were like, we are burying this book. And I was like, why? And then I looked into them and their picture book wing was fine. It was mostly my stuff. And all of their other stuff was like, uh, I mean, they picked up Woody Allen's memoir after oh, it got okay. picked yeah. off Amazon. They put out a book called The Truth About Fauci, which I looked through. There's no nude pictures. So what the fuck is the point? <laughs> um, they're like hardcore right, right wing conservative. And they're like, we're uh -huh. not having a feminist kids book by a gay. So they canceled my tour and I have a bunch of books sitting there. Well, that's annoying. And that book sounds cool. And Rob, what is your kid's book? Uh, the Wolfpack Pups. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, the Halloween, Wolfpack. Yeah. Is, that, like, yeah. is that where the new stuffed plushie? Yeah. Is that when you did that? Yep. It has like the, the patches or it's all it's patched together? It's a voodoo doll plush toy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah I remember plushie. the little plushie that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's all team up. You know, like you get a, get a, get a stuffed. Uh, Do workshops. Bussy yeah. fish lips or like or... <laughs> new stretch goal 25,000 each campaign. The three of us make an appearance and we give out uh plush Blakes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that'd be now, amazing. We'll work the and all. All. <laughs> give me a plush Blake, like done. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a story at the moment. Wait, about... what monster would Blake be? Blake, he would be, he would be just Blake. Like the, the monster he's, he's, that is Blake. He's, he would yeah. okay, he's he'd just... be that, he'd be that girl who's really into bees from that one episode of Smallville. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're gonna get a candy oh, no, man, no, you're wait, getting wait, wait, a candy man death. X Files, no, he's X Files alien with um, the whole bee control thing. Man. Remember, oh, there is a guy who can control the bee. He's gonna be at Planet Comic Con anime. We just found out, like. They're bringing Candyman. It makes not like why it's for and for Planet Comic Con anime. Maybe they're doing because an anime of, version. Oh my god! If they did an anime <laughs> Candyman, I would die. Nothing scared me more than Candyman. Dude, that I, movie that, messed me up. That, Jessica. And then they, the remake wasn't as scary, but I appreciate. It was good. Yeah, I but it wasn't. It, but, it wasn't. Like, original, they didn't. Though, follow, yeah. They didn't follow the rules quite right in the the mm. remake. Like I mm. liked the remake, but the rules they kept breaking the rules. And I'm like, you gotta establish the Candyman rules, and you gotta follow yeah. the Candyman rules. It, it felt like it was like trying to do too many different things, yeah. and then the, the third act sort of fell apart because they yeah. kept following the rules. I kind of feel like that's what they do with that Child's Play yeah. remake with the like, no, that rules. Yeah. <laughs> Child, like the, no, like series, like like there is only one bad Chucky thing, and it's like the second to last movie. Um, <laughs> everything else rules. I've heard that new series is pretty good. I haven't yeah. watched I haven't it. Seen it yet, no. The, is, it, um, is it Mark? Ham is Mark Hamill in it? Is it Mark Hamill, Chucky? The, he on, was, he was I... in the remake with the oh. doll, or the, uh, the the it was like a, a robot doll. Oh, uh, okay. That that that's the series, right? No, no. Yeah, the I thought series in... actually takes place from. It's kind of canon to the original movies. Mm. Oh, I for some reason I thought the series had a robot doll. I thought it was following on from that. No, no, no. That, yeah, the robot doll is the one with Mark Hamill that was like done a couple years ago. Oh, the. Uh, we, we could go down a whole fucking Chucky rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> I know. Did anyone else think that like he'd put her through the sewing machine in Child's Play 2? Like the, mm. the way that soundscape plays where you hear the sewing machine going and him laughing and then it just like he's killed her but I guess he's also stitched some stuff to her or something. With the foster mother. Oh, I, I kind of remember that. Remember. You know what yeah. I remember? I remember the stupid one where they like they stick the air hose in his mouth. In the warehouse, and his head blows up really big, and it <laughs> explodes. And I just was like, I thought that was the dumbest thing ever. Like, this doll has murdered everybody. It's possessed by the worst serial killer ever. Like, no one can catch it. No one can beat it. Oh, we didn't think to stick a hose in his mouth. Like, <laughs> good God. Anyway, um, if you want, if you want good writing with good characters and great, then payoff, watch the Chucky movies. Yeah, I mean, but, well, yeah. <laughs> Or check out Mary Shelley's School for Monsters Origins 2 uh, is where I was trying to go, Richard. Um, but I, I, I appreciate the I, I appreciate the effort. You know, we every every uh, every every horror franchise needs a fan. So you 
you will we'll carry that. I like anything that'll bring John Waters into a movie for no good reason. <laughs> There's a um, so the office next door to mine is a casting agent, and they have all the posters for the movies. They're incredibly proud of themselves for casting, like A Million Ways to Die in the West and Ted Two. Mm. Um, but also they have uh, Alvin and Ch- Alvin and the Chipmunks Road Chip, which. <laughs> Uh, I, I've watched through a few times and I did the timing on it. They're barely on the road. It's mostly plane travel, but it does have John Waters in it making a joke about what Alvin makes a joke about how no one eats dog shit. No, no one eats shit in their movies. It's fucking wild that that's in a kid's film. That is really weird. Oh my God. I don't remember that. Um, I'm not going to rewatch Alvin and the Chipmunks. So I was about to, I was about to, oh, no, I'm not no, going to do you that. No, just just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I mean, I have to go watch Erie, Indiana now because I have to go watch that Tupperware episode because I never saw that one. And I was oh, like, well, that's what I'm going to waste my time reason. tonight doing. It's, it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's episode two. Okay, thank you. That yeah. helps me a little bit. Wow. That's, I'm, so, I can't that's believe you just had that pulled out. This is a, the tier, this trading card inspired by you that hasn't, no one's backed this campaign, but people, I've had like four people back it. And Mark designs like a trading card. And your likeness, if you get to the, per, the person gets to pick the monster, pick some characteristics, pick some strengths and weaknesses, and then they get entered in my weird. Um, I call it weird because it's like a prototype of a game. It's um, a Google Forms game. I don't know during COVID. This is going to sound. I just that was a segue of nothing, guys, except that I'm staring at this image. <laughs> um, I made this Google Form game called um, Some Spells Are Forever, and it's a choose your own adventure. Um, okay. And I did it on the Origins 1 campaign. It was one of the stretch goals. And so everyone got it. And so the people who do these trading cards get to be a character in those games. So you can choose who to play. Uh, okay. And eventually we're going to make a card. Like Mark wants to make a card game. And um, I I kind of do. I do want to make one. I just don't know what kind yet. And But I do want to do a choose your own adventure. Oh, I'm sorry. I call it cast your own spell because I don't want to get copy like trademark attacks. But um yeah, it's a it's a fun little thing that w- took way too much time. Never do it as a more. I'm warning <laughs> you guys. I thought, oh, this will be fun because my daughters and I got into them because these public libraries were doing these fun games, fun stories on Google Forms. And I'm like, oh, this is a really creative yeah. thing. And I want to do it and then use it as a prototype, you know, to work with a bigger company to do an actual game. But, you know, it took up a lot of time. <laughs> like this will be easy i'll be done soon i remember in so my grade... backers i really put a lot of effort into that and i i know five of you played it so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know no. how many people played it i didn't look but i, th- I think the card game is cool I, there's there's yeah. been a few there's been a few people talk or like like pat shan that we mentioned earlier like he's been he's been releasing cards like limited edition cards yeah. that eventually like a set's gonna we'll come out game. and like all that's so like i i do i do think it's um I do think it's cool. And I, I also love choose your own adventure books, even yeah. though I, I remember I, there was a Jurassic park, choose your own adventure book. Mm-hmm. And I, everything I did, I died. No, you Just, died. You I, I, there, I, I could never, like, I thought about cheating. I thought about it. I was like, what if I don't, go to page 87 like what happens then if i just go to like, some random like i don't trust you what if i just start reading one page after the other what if i get weird you know and i didn't i was like i don't know why i did but oh i'm so mad i like could not you don't i couldn't your... beat this book i was like okay. this book is beaten this me. is a good but i want to make this like into a horror movie like a jumanji horror movie you know with choose oh, your yeah? adventure but you can't i mean they have to make it themselves because they they're the here, here's so here's my pitch, okay? Yeah. New stretch goal: thirty thousand dollars for a campaign, and we get Blake a fucking bookmark so he can just go back to the last place <laughs> and choose your own adventure. A special choose your own adventure bookmark. Magic. No, no, it's just, it's just, it's just one of your bookmarks. We're gonna. It's just one of my. Bar- yeah. <laughs> okay. You can have one of my new ones if I ever make a new batch. Also, nice. Blake, nice. I have to ask: Do you think that in the real Jurassic Park you would have fared better? No, I'd be dead. Okay. I would yeah, be, okay. well, so first of all, okay. I don't think I would have ever been there because I'm not. I haven't even been to. I don't know, like. I'm not even of like uh, Disney World travel. Um, uh, I don't even live that life of luxury. So yeah, like, I don't Disney, see. I don't sure. see Blake flying across the ocean to Isla Nebula, right to the uh, <laughs> grand opening sure. of Jurassic Park. Uh, so you're, where... you're dying like in the third movie when they come to the real world. And they just you. <laughs> yeah. Second, second movie. <laughs> 
Is it the second movie? Okay. I yeah, can't. yeah. It's lo Lost World where it comes to San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Jurassic World Three. They're they're back on Isla Nubar. They're back on the yeah on the island and. I'm going out in that geo that whatever that. Um, thing oh, those weird up. balls! Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. missing that. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you, want to, you want to get like the the experience of being an American gladiator, but also with dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah also, cool like, thing. yeah, like, yeah, we've evolved and have thumbs, but I want to know what it's like to be a hamster in one of those old balls. Like, that's all. <laughs> like, why would I not want to be that? You know, like, well, uh, if the T Rex can kick it and it just goes flying and you're all right, I mean, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Have you seen that video where like the Tesla hits one? There's like a guy in one of those like balloon hamster balls and a Tesla hits it and he oh, goes no. like flying and gets stuck in a tree and all his friends are laughing. So he, I assume he's okay. Like he would be dead. I don't know. But like oh, yeah. it, he very like this Tesla just full on runs into him. And it's like, you know, this is the um, I'm never going to get that kind of content on Blake's buzz. It's really a bummer. I, I you know, no one's ever going to. I'm never going to do it. Uh, I'm never going to, that's not going to be like the, uh, you know, this month on Blake's buzz, Rob Moltari drives his Tesla into Blake. And, uh, depending on how many feet Blake goes, depends on how many, uh, digital, uh, you know, digital books we unlock. And, and if Blake goes, <laughs> you get it, you get a customized die cut bookmark signed by Richard Fairgray, uh, hand numbered. No, I will not put my fucking name hand on numbered by Rich. And if we get to $55,000, you will get a uh, a, a bussy queen fish lips. I, what's her name again? Um, busy fish lips. Busy fi busy fish lips. Okay. Yeah. Bussy nugget. In <laughs> bussy 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 Phillips is the is the blonde thing <laughs> asshole. Busy Phillips is the actress from Freaks and Geeks and Girls Five Ever. Okay, it's okay. very good. I, I recommend to everyone. Uh, Rob, I have an important question. In this fiction that that Blake is creating here, which of your Teslas will you crash into him? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with the the blue one. Okay. Blue one? Tesla. Okay. I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna say the truck. Like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna drive into him with angles that Tesla on that. Truck. You just bounce right over it. Yeah, we're trying to get you to go a distance. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get out of it too, Rob, using the, using the Apple golf. I mean, you guys have seen that video, right? Where the dude gets out of his like Tesla truck and he like slams the door. Then he's like waving his hands around. He's got the Apple goggles on. I was like, this is the future. Oh, this God. is what we, this is what we have to look forward to is this is this. the short term future that will collapse. We're all. <laughs> yeah. I still hate it though. I know, I know like Richard has said how much he, he lives for digital comics, but like <laughs> part of me, like I got the whole time, like when, they, when they were showing stuff and it was like, Oh, like the movies and you can make it look like you're in a movie theater by yourself. And I was like, Oh cool. I can make it look like I'm more alone. That's what I need. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I was like the whole time I was like, man, I wonder what like comicsology would be like, you know, like if you, if, if you had this, like, comic open and i could like wave or like zoom in on panels or you know and i was like that's kind of cool but like i'm not gonna spend thirty five hundred dollars to read comic books in the sky like i'm sorry i mean i don't i i wish i if i would like to think if i had the extra money i would buy something else cooler yeah like a tesla There's better shit to buy or like, <laughs> you can buy this tier of jessica's campaign yeah you get a trading cost. card made for you for a tenth of the price yeah and that mostly so, go that a lot of that goes to the artist really so it's just more for fun. Yeah, well yeah, cuz I mean you're you're paying for a commission out of that. Like he's he's, he's drawing that, he's making it and then so it's going to be it's a, yeah, yeah. So you're I mean you're paying for art. Um but yeah, and then and then this comes with this comes with everything. That's this just the, for fun. No one whole, ever that's the <laughs> It's for That's, fun till someone backs, till it. Someone which one backs you, it. Which one of you cowards out there has got 500 <laughs> ponies who wants to, get to saddle everything. up? ride into the mary shelley world and, and blow jessica's mind right now <laughs> we, just need, we just need like 70 bots to back at this level yeah right and cancel after the yeah, show cancel, right. yeah. like to do whatever the thing was that i came up with last yeah year. we need a bunch of bots to back this so yeah. we can get him a trophy and i need yeah the, i need the trophy the stuffed blake um busy busy fish mouth uh the stage, the, the, the stage, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I He's got a statue. Many... You got a werewolf statue. That's yeah, funny. I got a werewolf no, that's statue. Your, that's your trophy. So that is, yeah. Um, uh, and look, then, look, and how then, how, um, look how happy Jessica looks when she's not dealing with us. Yeah, when she's not <laughs> on the show. Yeah, when I'm in front of my house, just this giving the peace sign to Jessica, nobody. <laughs> Jessica in the wild. Um, just look, reasons to live, reasons. I'm to smile. pretty happy when I'm by green things. I notice. <laughs> I always look much happier. There's green behind me. I'm, I'm near the nature. 
And I can, I can grab all of my woman jacket I is super dope thing. though. Like, where'd you get that jacket? All my nieces got me that jacket one year. No, nah, that's that's cool. It, it, looks like, it looks really expensive. Like, yeah, I I feel like most stuff with like DC stuff on it and a jacket, they're like that's like. It was cool. They they never. They my don't... family doesn't love me as much as Jessica's family <laughs> loves me. I want everybody to know that's the point I'm trying to get across. All right, right. so now we need to get like. I get a Wonder like Woman jacket. Let's from stop my nieces. Play. From my nieces. <laughs> be amazing this is the best this is this is why this is why i do the show guys this is why, this is why the so, sacrifice so let's be clear like this is not from her immediate family the love is not coming from nearby the, the call is not coming from inside I'm, the house but i am pretty <laughs> close to my nieces so it's like you know close nice. close it's close but not inside the house you're right also did you plan on this that you're running the campaign on kickstarter for two reasons and you're giving the peace sign like right next <laughs> I don't, I so, guess, no, yeah, I don't even a, know if I planned that. I just, that was the picture I decided to pop in there that day. I like that. You're like, there's two reasons two for this reasons, But I realized I didn't do that on purpose. That's funny. One is your money. Two is monsters are fucking cool. Pretty much. Back, yeah. to, back <laughs> the $500 tier right now. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, no, I, I, the, the, the campaign's doing awesome. Using Wellsprings, printing, printing, uh, printing locally, right? Like, well, well they're cool. from Ann Arbor where I went to college. So yeah. Oh, I, nice. I use them for that. And then I print somewhere else with the hardcover. Um, nice. did you want to tell people about your, this deal? Oh yeah. There's, um, we forget. hold on here. Let did me... I put it in? I hope I did. Um, I don't, I, don't, I didn't see it. Hold I, on, I, I did, but it may, it's possible I screwed up. I thought we scrolled all the way through. Uh, hold on. Backer. Weekly. Command F. Type in the word Blake. <laughs> it doesn't work because it's a graphic. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And I didn't write Blake in the thing. I just wrote. Well, basically, from the show till Saturday, I made a tier that's the Blake's Buzz tier. Um, and it's just the 20. It's just the hardcover book without all the extras um, for the $25. Just real yeah. simple. Keep it simple. Um, because I didn't have that by itself for a tier. So. There we go. Hold on. Through the magic of technology. Hey. All right, there it is. There it I, is. I, I did make it lie hip timed it, so maybe I timed it wrong. So I'll double check. But um, but regardless, uh, this uh is this is a beautiful hardcover. Uh it oh, and I love I love this La Llorona book so much. I know I'm butchering her the pronunciation. Um La Llorona. Like, it's like I am obsessed with that, like bloody mary we talked about candy man like that that like staring into the mirror in a dark room and and say and you know like summoning something from your reflection there's something like creepy and weird about it right and uh there's some there, there there's some of that with with uh, la Llorona and like and there's a, a re really great scene of the kid with vr uh with a vr headset i, I just his book has a lot of cool moments in it and and that that anna weissick art is just gnarly gorgeous uh, and jessica's writing is so damn good um so yeah you can you can snag this tier save a few bucks um and then uh there's also like i said origins and origins too uh, there's there's all sorts of cool stuff you can get on this campaign and i i i've said this numerous times i am 38 years old and I love this. It's it's a fun, enjoyable book. The art is so gorgeous. Like it's so funny how I stumbled across Anna's art through a variant cover of uh, David Popose's The OZ. Mm -hmm. That and and she did a very cool variant for that. And I was like, I love this art. And uh, and and then seeing her like not draw a war zone, right? And like yeah. and and it's it's so much like it's so much brighter and warmer. And then I like there is some there is some drama trauma uh, you know creepiness uh, it is it is still horror it's all ages horror but yeah. it is as I mentioned before how Jessica is very good at balancing that notion of like teaching lessons to her audience and and not being overbearing that same thing with that balance very good at generating some spine tingling moments right mm -hmm. while respecting the all ages factor and and not trying to give everybody a nightmare right or trying to like scar somebody a little, with a little nightmare a little nice tiny nightmares you know i just got a text from my uh, mother-in-law that she watched 80 minutes of this guy so <laughs> <laughs> like, who is this creep you're hanging out with and then, and then gave I, up 
I just like, went to try and I was I went to try and find a copy of the hardcover, uh, which I have two of, um, to to like show it off as a physical thing. But it turns out I've taken both of them home. Nice. Well, yeah. I do have mine because I'm a nerd. In your oh, okay, so, okay, you can show then. I was I was gonna but, hit. <laughs> but I, that's really sweet was. that you were looking for it. Yeah, this is the book, and I don't. I really want a claw on mine now. I'm jealous. Oh yeah, like a die, like a die. Yeah. Hey, that that volume volume two, like that. The, I'm the gonna bard, wait. I'm gonna bard. wait to be as cool as Rob. I'm gonna <laughs> wait till I have at least 400 backers on one campaign, and then I will <laughs> think about my, having claws on my cover. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to do. I want to when, when I do the uh, X wives as a trade. I want to mm -hmm. do a, a an edition that has stitching on the cover. Oh, that, that would be, be cool. cool. Yeah. Who's uh, Matt Kent? His that that d demonic kitty book he put out. Um, I can't think of the name of it, but it's the Book, it's it's in fur the book is is mm. covered in fur that sounds uh, and, and it's got it's got two die cut holes for the cat eyes but it's furry that oh, sounds and, horrible that's yeah, like weird really horrible weird. to touch and i don't want it kids <laughs> like that though there's like four of them at the book fair on monday i was like all well, these hairy books <laughs> I, I, I think it's a mixum thing I, I i'm trying to figure it out i maybe think maybe it mixum. is a mixum print no no the, the, not not that there's i a, thought he said nixon oh, i thought okay. he said a nixon thing like this a, is... yeah it's a, it's a richard nixon thing richard um, nixon. <laughs> It's it, it, you think it's just Lewis from skin uh, from suits, but it's actually Nixon. Um, <laughs> that man looks like he's wearing a Nixon mask. He does. Um, no, there's there's everyone's getting these uh, like sketchbooks and notebooks made at the moment. Yeah. That the covers, it's, I don't know what the cover stock is called, but it feels like a clammy palm. It's oh yeah, Nixon. it's uh, I know what you mean. It's so. Oh, gross. it's, it's uh, David Byrne calls it the soft touch cover and. Uh, I call it I call it the sensual touch cover because it makes him uncomfortable. It makes him uncomfortable. He's like, no, Blake, that's not what it's called. I'm like, oh, that. And I said I said that to uh, I was talking to Jonathan Hedrick one time, and I made that joke. And in, uh, in Francesca, Are you wearing hard covered shoes when you're dropping these names, Blake, because that's dangerous. Hardcover shoes. Oh, well, you're dropping a lot of names. You might hurt your it's, feet. It's a jo <laughs> it's not Jonathan Hedrick's not like Jonathan Hedrick and David Byrne, but I'm going to assume you mean David Byrne, the musician. The, no, David. David Byrne, the comic book. David. David Byrne, the comic book. I, I, I was being God funny. Damn, the more famous. I wish. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Sorry. I'm you just, wish it was the other I'm David just Byrne. A, I'm just a star <laughs> fucker. That would be amazing. With, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I said, I said the, the. I was like, oh yeah, the, uh, the, the sensual touch cover. And Francesca was like, what? And I was like, oh yeah, you, you don't get it. And I was like, and I had to. Um, I did. So she, I talked too fast sometimes, and she was like, "What?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry." I was like, "No, no." Like, by the way, she is a name you can drop because, like, her artwork fucking rules. As the kids say, it honks. The hon yeah, <laughs> it, it honks and squeaks and chirps and burps. I don't think the kids say those things. So I don't <laughs> fuck them kids, oh, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like the, you, they got drip going, busting. They got, yeah, they got that drip, dude. Those covers are on fleek. <laughs> But a lot of those, a lot of, I mean, I have a teenager. They don't all say that stuff. No, they, they, they make fun they of a lot of it too, yeah. but someone's saying it, but yeah. Like yeah. And then, really and then someone, is, someone fact, puts in comic book dialogue person. every now and then it sounds silly, as, <laughs> silly as hell. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't, it's funny. I do remember there was a waitress at, uh, uh, when I was, when I worked at Hooper's, this, this waitress and she, she very bleach blonde hair and dark eyebrows. Right. But it, it like, it worked, you know, and then like, it, it she just it, she kind of vibed with her or whatever and this this young kid was like hitting on her one night right and he's like there with his parents and they're like eating lunch on on dog day of saturday and uh and, and he's like this this kid's like girl your eyebrows are on fleek and she was like thanks and like and then like we we went and like we are we're all googling it like in the in the hallway of like hooper the back hallway of like hoopers by the beer cooler like, what, what the hell does fleek me yeah because she's like is it because it doesn't match my hair I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I i don't want you to correct me on this please i want you to let me live in this fantasy okay. is hoopers just like hooters but they're the size of basketballs no yeah Oh, yeah, it's just for it was we we did work i did work with some very what is hoopers charlie hoopers is a bar i used to work at okay all right no i just needed the clarification you want to know oh, what yeah, hoopers yeah. Meant. 
We got, yeah, we got, we got it. Rob, I have oh, a oh, yeah, oh, you've got them. Those are, oh, yeah. oh, wow. Well, Mark does them. He, like, he actually, he might make them a hologram. I'm not sure, but right now, that's, that you can By see. By the way, it. new stretch goal. Uh, if, <laughs> I uh, had to <laughs> stop you guys from wherever that conversation was. We going. reached $45,000. <laughs> All the stickers uh, will be sent to me before they're sent out, and I will make the wolf anatomically correct. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought he was going to make me go back to work at the bar. He was like, if we raise forty five thousand dollars, Blake has to quit his job in comics dictate. and return to the, the restaurant world. Uh, oh my um, god! I want yeah, to no, save you from re reliving restaurant days because uh, I, I have yeah. those as well. And yeah, it's I sometimes every now and then I miss it, but like yeah. it's you know it's 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 like it's I like those it weird, yeah. There's I'm like man, I wonder what everybody's doing. Oh wait, no, I don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, I've I don't miss getting hit in the face. Job. Definitely, definitely don't miss that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, all of you got all y'all. Well, I guess Richard doesn't. Richard's campaign is over now. Um, is it? We I think it is. Now. Really Maybe we talked through it. Oh, well, we might. What happened? Is but this like, is this gonna be like my first wedding night? No, I've got twenty eight minutes. Oh, you still got twenty eight minutes? Okay, oh, good. Well, okay, well, good. You can I, still twenty eight minutes to back it. Go. You, you I, can I, still I, back it, but you can I, also. I, was, I, I thought I thought we timed this well. I was like, I guess I guess we didn't, but yeah, I was uh. Uh, if if you go to the comments on on Facebook or YouTube, uh, you can you can click this link. This is uh, this is Richard's next um, this is Richard's next uh, Kickstarter that launches tomorrow. Right? I, be I believe it launches tomorrow. This is with a different publisher. Um, Simon, this is he did the shed with them. He did shed, and he's I've actually I'm doing three books with him. Three of the twenty four books I have coming out this year are through Simon's publisher. Nice. Yeah, he did. They do cool horror books. He's, he seems like a cool dude. Do you like? Do yeah. you like writing there? I really like Simon. Cool. Um, I really like working. Like they. He and I Mario, feel like if you didn't, you would say so. You'd be like, I <laughs> no, yeah, stand no, this guy. I don't like, like, <laughs> about anyone. Like the two publishers that I really love are are uh, fan base press who put out Four Color Heroes. Barbara mm -hmm. Dillon is one of my favorite color people in the world. Sweet. Glad Brian Dillon women. is like like in the top ten, but like Barbara's my favorite. Nice. Um, and uh, and they both know that. Um, although they claim to be Star Wars experts, and I knew a Star Wars thing that they didn't know, and I'd never seen the movies. So what? I knew the name of the first girl robot. Oh, well, you've got me beat, but I don't claim to be a Star Wars expert. There's a girl robot? Fan. Yeah, TC-13. She's in Phantom Menace. She shows up with oh, a tea yeah. tray at the beginning. I have, mm. once I found out. So here, I okay, feel like we shouldn't talk about her unless she's TC-18 or older, though. Here's the <laughs> thing. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is the kind of shit that got you fired from Hooper. Um, <laughs> you got fired from Hoopers? <laughs> I did. Yeah, like, I, actually, yeah, I did get fired from Hoopers. Yeah. Uh, so the... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. The, the so I I, I can't for, reference for her. taking home to go orders that were gonna get thrown away anyway, and they, I I I I took I would like take the orders and like build monster, like food monstrosities with them because like like at the end of the night like some of the DoorDash and like they sometimes they didn't get picked up. And so you got like sometimes all these orders and like this, it was like, oh, this, the staff would eat them sometimes, but like, yeah, so I, I, I would, I started taking stuff home cause it was like going to get thrown away. And then I took pictures of it, uh, like me making crazy food. And then they were like, Hey, you're stealing food from the company. You're fired. And I was like, so okay. what he's not telling everyone is they used to give the leftover food to uh, orphanages. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, no. No, that's for Blake. I was like, um, yeah, I was like, I, I drank all this rumple mints that I only paid for about half of during my shift. And now I need to eat these cheeseburgers to, you know, finish my shift. So that's so, why I probably got fired. But, you know, whatever. So um, they, they made some reference to this thing. And I referenced this thing about thing and they, they didn't know about this girl robot. And I honestly don't know how I fucking knew about it. But so afterwards, I was like, I need to teach them a lesson about this girl robot because um, of feminism. So I went on eBay.com. And I started buying up uh, these like action figures from the Phantom Menace that no one wanted for like four bucks a piece, and sending them to uh, to their address weekly. And so every week I'd send another one of these action figures to uh, to them, but you know, addressed to Darth Maul, obviously. Um, and I found out about eight months later that I had their address wrong. So oh my god, once a week for eight months. A completely different house of a stranger was receiving a Star Wars, the same Star Wars action figure. To Darth Maul. Wow, <laughs> that's actually way better than them getting it. I yep. do, yeah, that that yeah, is that is way better. Yeah. Um, but no, no, Simon's great to work for, and 
I'm doing so whale I think launches tomorrow or the next day it's a it's a ghost story about regret um that sort of asks the question why do ghosts whale um and then uh pretty soon the book I'm drawing right now is called Frog Alley and it's about someone who isn't alive anymore not because they died but because they were too weird to exist and uh then later in the year it's undecided whether um, there's two books i've got coming out one is going to go to them uh one is called tongue and it is a body horror story about a woman who was always told her tongue would get her in trouble Ooh. um and uh the other is called stolen water and it's sort of a horror take on pinocchio about a man raising a plant as his son wow all right you've pitched only one comic in your life that i won't read and it was today i'll read all of the rest <laughs> which, 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 the, tongue which i can't do the tongue story. yeah no like honestly if you don't read, I, it's 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 the but it's, it's not because you did it it's just because no I'm, I already, I'm already doing this just thinking about it <laughs> i have i like i started doing some concept art for it and i mm -hmm started gagging while i was oh yeah and like like i'm the per like i have a book coming out later this year called things that go dump in the night it's horror stories about eating and shitting and that is fine but tongue has squicked me out so fucking hard i think rob's wife has come yep. <laughs> sorry the... sorry mrs matari we kept Rob's... him out we kept him out he's gonna turn into a <laughs> werewolf i'm just trying to werewolf. i'm just trying to make it rich i'm sorry i'm just trying... <laughs> I'm just trying to get these books sold. Come on. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no that's I'm, I'm that, excited. That was warning one. <laughs> that, you know, I, I, I just, I just looked at the time. Like I've, I've kept you guys for, for two and a half hours. I know, I know all of you have families and, and stuff. Um, I'm alone. You're married, but he's in Canada and he oh. definitely exists. <laughs> i like how he said that like like it was canada that like was suspicious like Does canada exists like, no, yeah all, <laughs> all all of no all americans think canada is fake like i, I have yeah. been there actually when you I say I have to friends they just go to a different school like i have this hot husband he lives in canada you yeah know him? like it sounds so made up oh yeah i remember that i mean yeah because i i totally uh i totally his name is george glass that went to a different school like a long time ago it was my first yeah also i got that's the same same friends yeah. there's a there's a there's a movie theater halfway between my office and my apartment and so i go to the movies by myself a lot mm -hmm. and the people who work there have started feeling really sorry for me and they keep giving me free popcorn because i'm always alone and i'm like no it's just on my way home it's fine like i'm watching a fucking rep screening of clueless i'm happy um but they keep giving me popcorn but i have diverticulitis i can't even listen to corn like it's that bad so i just have to like throw it out without them noticing and it's just it's causing me a lot of stress <laughs> damn you gotta tell them you gotta tell them yeah i feel you do but no, like now it's, you've gone too long you actually you've yeah, gone I was gonna too say, long how long has this been going on yeah it's only been... Been going no on you can like weeks. throw it back at them though because it's, it's only been like... on for two weeks but i've seen 11 movies so like it's and for eight of them they've given me free popcorn so yeah. I, I i don't yeah, you're too far in the hole now <laughs> yeah i like, just gotta learn to eat popcorn do it should i just take a backpack and like pour it in and then i guess i could just put the container in that's put the probably... container in the backpack and then is there a homeless person no you're in... no no i'm in hollywood there are no there, homeless people there, around i mean there's, you couldn't possibly find sure someone to give that uh, popcorn to. person wanting some popcorn i found a homeless person uh in my doorway to See? my apartment then the bring corner. the popcorn you're uh, it's perfect you know what i saw someone do on tiktok the other day not feed the homeless they took popcorn and made rice crispy treats with it like melted like marshmallows and put some vanilla extract and butter it, in it and again, then made it's like still, popcorn it's catch just popcorn. That just in my pop. intestines and just rip my bowels apart so, <laughs> and i i don't i don't want my bowels ripped apart from that end blake <laughs> i'm glad you specified um username on ass pig is napoleon bone together okay <laughs> um See, it's because grinder is too obvious a joke. You have to go with a worse. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah, you gotta. You can't and, just say grinder when there's ass, ass, ass pig, pig out there. You know, but like, I, I'm not on ass pig. But um, I once got an email from someone uh, who I met because they fell over, and I helped them fix their leg. And then they found my email address and started messaging me because it turns out that we dated the same guy 11 years ago at the same time. Fun small world. And their seventh email was hey i'm starting to think you're not interested 
but just in case, here are some pictures of my butthole. <laughs> and my username, this is such a good sentence. My username on Ass Pig is Beef Stew. I'm so glad Donna's not here anymore. I'm so glad <laughs> that she went to bed. <laughs> happy that my mother-in-law got too tired <laughs> i don't care yeah i'm fine <laughs> i mean that was funny though beef I, I, what's what's the what doesn't if beef stew doesn't entice you to get to kickstarter folks i don't know what, right. what, what. Right. if anyone uh, wants to know more of these kind of stories the add-on of too hot for octopus is available which is a pros sort of faux journal, 44 pages of uh, my uh, telling my entire life story, basically, uh, that begins with me jerking off to Grandpa Munster. Wait, is but that's, so that's like a prose version of your graphic memoir? It's So, so Octopus is the memoir that focuses uh -huh. on like seven key events. And then people uh -huh. kept asking me, like, who are these fucking villainous men? You know, like my, my, Paul, my friend Paul has always said that my butthole has been like a camping ground for villainous men. And he's right. <laughs> Uh, and so like the MCU. is the, uh, <laughs> is the backstories and context and the kind of like the aftermath of what happened to those men, Okay, which is where the Chris Claremont story is because Chris Claremont looks uncannily like the love of my life. Um, who is not really the love of my life, but it I does kind of look true. like somebody you'd, you'd be into. Yeah. Like if you like, like, so basically I run into him at Comic-Con, think it's my ex and freak the fuck out and start screaming at him that like, he can, this is the one place he can't be because comics are mine, not his. Um, yep. <laughs> Those normal Chris Claremont. And I, I wondered if everybody has weird Chris. Do you guys have weird Chris Claremont stories? I'm but like, hand, like let's show of hands. We would all. So you're gonna go Claremont make one. Head. I'm gonna go make one. <laughs> <laughs> you only live once. <laughs> yeah, like you got. If you're gonna be in comics, you gotta you gotta get. I gotta get go Chris Claremont that out. riled up about something. I don't know. Like uh, that is that's funny. Because yeah, some research first and figure out what I'm gonna. <laughs> button i'm gonna push because but... yeah so so many people told me they were like oh yeah chris, like you know chris and it's funny because he's so like because of who he is right it's just like he can be kind of a dick to you and you're like i love him yes, though. like you know it's okay sure yeah. sure chris you know yeah, yeah. like Please, I, Daddy, I'd, 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 I'd hate me too i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i talked to you you know like it's just like uh and you're just it's just because of who he is you're just like okay with it he's never been like that rude to me but he's just he's had an odd I, okay, I don't. I this is what he did to me. They let us in really early on Friday at the con, like over an hour early. There was nobody there, and like they they weren't people weren't even done setting up their booths yet. And like these other press guys were around talking to Chris Claremont. And so like I was I went around and like I said hey to people. I was talking to. I went and caught Maria Wolf and like I talked to her for a little bit. And I go and Chris is sitting there and he's like he's talking to press and I didn't I didn't ask for an interview right then. I just said hey Chris like sometime this weekend if you're free would you want to do like a quick like five or ten minute interview and he looks at his watch and he goes well, this thing hasn't even started yet and he turns away from me in his chair and starts talking to somebody else and i was like i said i'm sorry sir and i walked away i didn't know what else to do and i was like holy shit but he's he's the reason i got a kevin eastman interview like at the, at the, at the, at their panel, I went up and asked Eastman to say, cause that's that I figured that's how you do it at a panel. You ask a good question and then you, you come up to them at, at the panel and, and, and ask for a picture. And then you're like, Hey, can I get a quick interview? And some, and usually they say yes. And so I asked Kevin, I was like, can I get a quick interview? And he's like, and he's, uh, he's almost getting ready to tell me he doesn't have time. And I'm and I'm like, okay, dude, no worries. And Chris Claremont goes, of course he will. But he did it because Kevin Eastman was trying to tell me no. And he and so like Chris was kind of being a hit Chris. And oh. and then and then Kevin was like, Kevin was like, swing by the booth. And I did. And <laughs> Kevin gave me a five minute interview. And it and it was uh, I got an interview with Kevin Eastman because Chris Claremont was a dick. And <laughs> so I will be forever thankful for Chris Claremont. <laughs> Being like, Chris Claremont. Like, just quietly, the key to getting an interview with Kevin is always go through Courtney. She'll organize it. She'll help you out. She's a great person. His wife? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, again, they don't they don't really respond to 
a lot of no, 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 just, just, just when you, when you're there, just like she, she'll she'll um, be there. Just no, well, she she was the, she's the one who cleared it. Like they, when I went up there, she was they were talking like the guy was talking to her, and, and she was like, "Who told this guy he could get an interview?" And I was like, mm-hmm. "Kevin." <laughs> and then, but yeah, they were they were cool. Like they waited. Not only did he work through his lunch to clear his line, which you don't he didn't have to do right. And he like so he worked through his whole lunch, clear his line. And then hung out, uh, stayed five minutes late. He, he signed all the people that worked Hollywood Row. He signed all their lanyards because they had Eastman lanyards um, mm-hmm. for Hollywood Row. Signed all those for everybody. Said thank you. Uh, and then gave me a, a five-minute interview, like the con had shut down. Like, for anyone who doesn't know, that. Hollywood Row is like death row, but slower and more demoralized. Yeah, it's I don't I the only reason I went over there, I do that is not the part of the con I'm there for. Like it's cool, like whatever, but I just like I'm not into that. But yeah, like that's that's where they put Kevin Eastman. Like and all the other comic book people, like even Chris Claremont, even all the all these people, they're all in the comic book area, but then like you know, the father of the Ninja Turtles is with the, was with the Hollywood. It's kind of weird, but I don't know. Well, that's where, you, that's where you got to go meet Kevin Eastman and, and everybody wants to meet uh, Kevin Eastman, but yeah, it was cool. And uh, I owe, I owe Chris Claremont. Um, I guess I just owe Chris you, Claremont. You don't, I don't owe him for that. Like, <laughs> I will say, I, I'm going to tell I, you, I'm going to say there's no owing there. You don't. <laughs> look, look, I'm not saying Chris Claremont is a villain because this is not, this is shit about someone who looks exactly like him. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not going to share it publicly here, but Blake, I'll send you a picture of my ex later and you'll see. Um, uh, but uh, during COVID, I messaged my ex to make sure he was safe. Because, like, by the way, my ex lives in Malibu and in really near a very good chicken place. So I kept having sex with him. Because um, I'm not going to go to fucking Malibu for sex or chicken, but I will go for both. Go for both? Yeah. Got um, him. Got him. And I messaged him during COVID to make sure he was okay. And his response was, oh, Richard, we are loving, he's married, we are loving COVID because, you know, we have such a nice house, we have such a good view, and our neighbor died and we've been able to extend our vegetable garden. Her family can't come in to sort anything out in time, so we've just shifted the the land border a little bit. Camping ground for villainous men. (laughs) Malibu. (laughs) No, my butthole. Oh, okay, that's right, I forgot. Okay. That's that's <laughs> the new. I blocked it out. Bumble. I blocked it out. <laughs> I'm, anytime I hear Malibu now, I'm gonna be like, mm. "That's gonna." Hillary Duffer Hole. Flash into my mind. Wow, who would have thought that that's where Blake's buzz would? Go? I mean, I guess I kind of knew that's where Blake's buzz would take us, probably, but not necessarily <laughs> this time. Uh, it's, Rob, Rob's podcast. like, I've been here before. Uh, uh, <laughs> um. Still has a B for a logo, but the stinger's on the front. <laughs> All right, the mom has to go. Yeah, the, <laughs> like my host, kids. I, I'm, I'm hitting my. I've gotten the text. I don't. The host. The, the, the host. The host. Like I. It's. It's. it's I had a nice uh, time. I'm not. I just. Right. am like starting no, to fade. I. I didn't. I had the worst. No, I'm kidding. I. All of you. I love all of you, and you all have amazing <laughs> projects. And and it's been. I seriously, it's been awesome over the last couple of years to to get to know all you better and to just watch all you guys slay these Kickstarter, these crowd. Like, I, I hope all of you do pat yourself on the back because in, in a time right now where a lot of people are are struggling uh, and dealing with slow campaigns and just it really, really struggling and and really fighting for it, you know, you guys have you guys have made stuff that gets uh, audiences excited, that keeps these that keeps your numbers buffed up that you know these these campaigns are just doing real well for you and so i i congratulate all of you and i'm excited for everything that that you guys keep doing i mean i, I and i'm i want you to keep making comics richard yeah you too. everyone except you richard everyone no I, you. I, I like you really you really <laughs> It's, been, it's just been it's been cool to to see the success that, that you guys get and 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 how supportive you are of the crowdfunding community and in, and in, in, in the indie scene as as you all are like you've all i've seen you all like reach out help help other people you know, like with whether it's cross promo stuff or offering advice or you know even you know just it's it's cool what you guys do and, and i see it and i appreciate it and so you know i'm glad i'm glad comics has all of you for real no, I feel a little mushy. Good. I, know. I didn't Good. want to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. You never know. Is it going to get weird, or is it, are we going to? Is everybody going to cry? Is, new, new is everybody going to cry because they're sad, or because they're one last stretch goal though? New stretch yeah. goal. Two right. fifths. Wait, was that it? Was that the stretch goal? Yeah. 
I was doing a gross stretching joke. I was, oh, I, oh, I, I, oh. I, I, try, I wanted to break the sincerity. Yeah, and we all just didn't have it. We all just <laughs> you're all just like, no, Richard, you got too specific. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so squirt.org, uh, username Rick Moranis. Um, <laughs> And remember to get over to Kickstarter and Don't get stretched. <laughs> you have 10 minutes left to back my campaign. And then you can decide later if you want to back Jessica's no, You got to do it right after that. Yeah. You you gotta, to... It's right three at a time. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. But look, I, I, look. You got to get I'm, Richard's right now, though. I'm a fucking sloppy dirtbag and I can't apologize for it because I just, it's who I'm going to be for the rest of my life. But if, if, if you've had like, there, there's so many people that I know, like whether even if you're out there, like this guy's sense of humor, like I, I dare you to like read his stuff and listen. Like if you've listened to two hours and 50 minutes of us talking and Richard hasn't made you laugh a little bit that whole time, I let's look, talk, reach out. If you need yeah, a friend, need I'll listen. If, if you're over 65 and you want your dick sucked and you're within walking Jeez. distance, oh, just hit God. me. All right. <laughs> I'm um, bored. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, that's it. Has been it, it has been a time on Blake. Look, I have a taste, you know. It's, it's, it's <laughs> <grandpa> <laughs> <or both>. There's a <laughs> Jess. Jess is like, guys, my kids. I gotta go. Rob's like, my wife. I gotta go. Richard's like, I will do weird shit online. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, that's all right. We all got our, we all have our thing. We all yeah. have our thing. Everybody's 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 got something. Um and uh and there's a there's a comic book on Kickstarter for whatever kind of weird you are, I promise you. And 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 these three have lovely examples of of some wonderfully weird, fun, contagious, animated, lovely comics uh in one way or another that will will oddly enough remind you of like how human it is to be human and and for real all of you do that in very intriguing ways that was a really smart thing for me to say at three hours into this podcast we'll unpack that later but unless anybody else has anything to say i'm gonna i'm gonna set you all free get to get to those kickstarters everybody who watched or who watches later thank you all so much really encourage you guys to, to follow everybody there's there's links in the descriptions of the campaign we're sharing them on on facebook on on social media everybody's so good about promoting their own stuff so if you look if you look up everybody you will find the awesome comics that they're trying to put in your hands uh this has been so fun everybody i i wish you the best of luck for the rest of the campaigns and, and richard I, I i hope the new one that starts tomorrow is is great and I don't know how you do that back to back, man. But like, let's well, my, my the next one that I'm running isn't for like two and a half weeks. Oh, okay, so it's actually really easy. Okay, and it's only it's only 15 more this year that I'm running. It's fine. Only 15. Okay, well, yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's, go jump in the night. We'll check, we'll check in with you, like in a, in a in a. Like, I'm, like, I'm going to do two this year. That's all I can handle. That's like Horror my short limit. two and three. X wives three and four. The lights that guide you home one through three. Got them all. Wow. Well, on Hill three and four. I'm, I, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing it because I love, I love reading your stuff. So keep, keep cranking them out. You just like reading it for free when I send it. To I you. do. It may, free comics are better. Uh, from now on, I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna say like this? Blake, Blake, get me on your show again, and the, and once you agree, I will send you the comic. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Because you know, you got you guys know I'll read it and prep and actually talk to you about it. Unlike Wait. some shithead hosts out there. Anyways, I will keep talking. Hey, hey, so we leave gotta go. Cody alone. I forgot to send him the comic in advance. <laughs> oh god, it was so it was so for real, so fun catching up with everybody and and have a have a have a great night and a, and a happy rest of the campaign. And 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 Richard and Jessica enjoy the cons. Rob, quit sitting on action figures. Uh, what, are, what else we got to do? I don't know. Get those boxes out of there. Uh, <laughs> I'm turning into, uh, I'm like backing up Rob's wife now. I'm like, get your toys and your boxes. Pick All them right. up. And don't forget, you can get collectible matches from my oh, campaign yeah, for the next four minutes. Do they work? Like real matches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, they're real matches. I'm, I'm, I'm the first comic ever to have matches as a thing. Can you ship those? Is that legal? You can ship them by ground only. Okay. How else would they have sent them to me? Someone's got to mail matches. Like, yeah, that's true. Someone's got to mail the matches. Yeah. <laughs> who, All right. Who go mails the matches? Everybody. Yeah, we got to go. We're gonna right. keep. It's we're gonna talk about mailmen and match mail people and matches. Who knows? It's gonna get weird. All right. Thank you, everybody. And this is it. Finally, we're 